today uh, I would like to introduce uh, two fascinating people, Santos Bonacci, William Schreiber, uh, author of, of uh, uh, Dance of the Zodiac, very nice book, uh, what we're going to present uh, today, some of this uh, information of this book, uh, how all the energies influence us uh, around the world, but we can get today uh, on this presentation. So I would like to thank you uh, for invitation and uh, hello Will, hello Santo, how are you today? Very well, thank you. We can we can start today to show a bit information how the um, uh, how the zodiacs uh, how we can recognize uh, uh, zodiac sign by the look uh, by all different influences uh, and William is a man who who really understood this uh, and he test on himself and 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 check uh, many many years uh, he tried to uh, understand this this knowledge and put all the puzzles together and we can see today on this presentation how we can recognize by the look uh, what kind of zodiac we have and other sign of course ascendant moon sign and, and zodiac uh, so you, if you can say some words uh, William about you how did you uh, start uh, to be interested in this kind of kind of knowledge it was the family connection or maybe friend or you just you just feel yeah. that that this is your hobbies and, and you need to go into this deep. My, my favorite story, are you hear me fine? My favorite story is that my friend uh, in 1973, my gosh, that was 46 years ago. He was into astrology and I did photography, so I decided to take some pictures to prove that astrology was bull. And he was a Taurus, so I had to prove it was bull. So mm -hmm. we throwed the pictures down. My dad was a Taurus. My friend was a Taurus. Found a whole bunch of pictures, threw them all down, and we were sitting there looking at them. And uh, I said, they're all different. He said, no, 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 they're not, they're not. So I, uh, I, I, I saw the shape, the look in the eyes, just the, the squareness of fixity. My favorite thing is then I learned how to draw it. It took me about 10 years to do the caricatures. But my favorite thing was the Taurus was I said, well, they got to be thinking something. They got to be doing something. What does a Taurus bull do? Smells the roses. So when they smell the roses, they lock down, their brows come down, their nostrils widen, they get really <laughs> And that's that, and that was the easiest one to draw. I'm still not happy with Gemini because they change too much but ah. for my characters. So, oh, so I worked through all of them as a actual had to, uh, you know, act them out in a way to to become what each sign was: fixed, mutable, cardinal. And then the subtleties with the shapes came later, and um, they improved over the years. We got some old pictures old images tonight. I'm going to show you some of the old ones and some of the new stuff. So that's the way it started. And uh, they got me a little gig in Dell Horoscope, world's leading astrology magazine, now in its 23rd year. And so that's um, once a month for 23 years. So I, that's what made the new book, uh, the uh, Portraits of Personality. You know, that looks backwards on the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like it's up backwards. I wonder why that happens. I was noticing that my hands are the opposite. Anyway, it's, 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 it must be in a, anyway, it's Portraits of Personality. There's 235 of the, uh, uh, you can see the pictures and the collages and the faces. Yes. You can yes. All show their ascendants and stuff. And we'll talk about that tonight and show some examples. I present this book later on. I put a more, more bigger picture to present. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So anyway, of course, the first one was the dance of the zodiac, which is oh, that flower attacked me. <laughs> is the, it was the first one. It actually, if you're beginning, this one is really a lot simpler. It basically describes a little roomier, easier, more space to flow through. And uh, but it really it was very difficult. 
and I wanted to prove it wrong. And then every time I saw something, it was just, I just saw it. I just, I always was kind of visual. That's why I was into photography and did cartoons in college with my friend who was the astrologer. Uh -huh. And, and uh, anyway, so that's how it happened. And uh, so it's really interesting. Uh, did you have anything to add, uh, Santos? I, I met Santos. He called me up. Oh, my goodness. What was it, 15 years ago or something? And said, I like your book. Send me one. And that was the first little one. I don't even have it here. Um, Santos still has this book on his website. People the first buy it. one. A little one. It yeah. was a little one. It was a bestseller. I printed 2,500 and I still got 2,300 20 years later. So it's a huge bestseller. <laughs> but it was a start and it was a, it, it, you know, there's oh. Santos. Hello, hello, Santos. Then here we are. I, I didn't realize I didn't have my camera on. So sorry, guys. I <laughs> thought I was on. <laughs> The astrologer always has a problem with the communication and the internet, the electricity, because this is opposite uh, houses, yeah? Yes. Uh, if you are a philosopher, you need to be a good astrologer, but opposite house, houses, like third house uh, communication, it's, uh, it's opposite, actually. So sometimes it can be some difficulties, but uh, that's, I know something about this, as you, as you know, on, on the beginning. <laughs> in the computer to, to start. But uh, regarding William, uh, what he said about Taurus, that he, he was interested in this uh, behavior of, of typical Taurus. So I can only say that I don't have a Zodiac Taurus, I don't have an Ascendant, but I have a Moon in Taurus. And I spent many, many years in the uh, uh, beauty sector, uh, especially perfumes and fragrances, and also I start on myself uh, to to do a lot of tests uh, with the new 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 smell uh, based on ozone, based on fresh air, based on yeah. earth, uh, which is geospin. This is kind of uh, so I didn't know before. Of course, I, when I started 17 years ago, to be interested to 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 invent some new new smell. That this is my moon, actually, that my mind, actually, in in the in the Taurus sign. Yeah. I notice when you the mood is when you react, you really ground down as you yes. react to my, something I throw at you, and you go. You, your your mood is your reaction. Your sun is your projection. The sun radiates, the moon reflects. So that's the way I learned to tell the difference. There was mm -hmm. the fact that you know uh, people would react. And interesting, this the ascendant is the now. You're not doing any. Here I'm walking in the room. I'm just not projecting or reacting. I'm guess my rising sign. Uh, I already I told Santos. Sagittarius. <laughs> pretty obvious. Very jovial, the ruler Jupiter. Yep. Sagittarius, the happy sign. Okay, I gotta get serious. I'm a Capricorn and none of this nonsense here, people. <laughs> yeah, Capricorn the Earth and uh, typical. My my father's twenty twenty fourth of December, and it's very uh, and it's a bit similar uh, to William uh, by the by the body. Mm -hmm. Body and look, yes, uh, it's it's very interesting. This, but I have ascendant Virgo, uh, Taurus Moon, and uh, Aquarius uh, Zodiac. So, so Aquarius is always close to this kind of undiscovered knowledge. <laughs> Yeah, well, the moon's in Aquarius tonight. Last night, things got a little, um, uh, man, we got that Pluto-Saturn thing going on, and the node was there, and and I mean, all in Capricorn, and just getting really cruddy in, in this Capricorn moon last night, and today it went into Aquarius. I'm not, so it must be on your side of the world, Santos, and Aquarius, thank goodness. So it feels lighter tonight. I feel much lighter than last night. I just anything. So things happen, you know. It's all rhythmic, mm -hmm. um, um, and it's all it's all a process. And this process just this is what I'm trying to come out with the nature thing. 
if we understand nature and we become all 12 signs, we learn to use our Taurus and smell the roses, or we learn to be Sagittarius and kind of think big and see the cosmos beyond here, you know, the fire of mutability. You just all if you use all these energies, if you get stuck anywhere, just go to the next sign and keep the circle going. That's the way I see it. You agree with that, Santos? Yeah, yep, absolutely. Yeah. The uh, the uh, the zodiac is the greatest teacher of uh, the science of energy and frequencies. Every sign has its frequency, and so when you have the sun in a certain sign, it transmits that frequency to your personality. That's why uh, you can see the sign in the individual when you know what you're looking for, because they are conditioned to that frequency where the sun is on the ecliptic, depending if it's up at the Tropic of Cancer or down at the Tropic of Capricorn. Yeah. But regardless, wherever it goes, each sign has a different frequency and a different archetypal energy. That's why Aryans like me, you can see on the face, you can see the ram features, you can see the ovine features. Uh, Capricorns like Bill, he also is an ovine, but it's more like the goat, it's very, very similar, Capricorn and Aries. Uh, you, Greg, Aquarius. Well, there's not many animals in Aquarius, you know, it's yeah. not an animal sign, it's, it's the human sign. So, not so much an animal look will come through that sign. It's very, very sort of a clean sign, which, uh, which is very human. But why do you take the, on the look of the animal? Why is that? Well, because the frequency of that sign is archetypal. And, yeah. that's, and so Leo, Leo, an individual born under Leo, he has that frequency of the feline, the cat, and, and so certain things will manifest through that because that's how the cat is conditioned. It's conditioned in that set frequency of Leo, you see, and this yeah. is how it happens. So what I wanted to say was, um, uh, just to introduce my part, and then I'm just going to leave it over to Bill, what, what I was hoping to do is uh, just to go sign by sign introduce the sign and then let Bill take over sharing his screen because he has just uh, uh, an abundance of resourceful information that I want the listeners to be able to glean as much information as possible on each sign and they can go away and do this for themselves and prove that uh, astrology is a science. So I'd like to start by saying you can either get Bill's book uh, through my website, Universal Truth School, or you go straight to Bill's and, and you get it there. And what you have is um, essentially you get a whole bunch of photos for each sign. Now, on my YouTube channel, Mr. Astro Theology, I've done about 10 different presentations on Bill's books. Uh, that you can see there. But this one's going to be the best one because we actually have Bill here who yes. will be able to elaborate uh, properly and thoroughly. So when you uh, guys are ready to begin, I'll introduce the first sign. Well, anyway, I want, uh, you know, the book is also if the, around the world, there's this little thing called a uh, lightning source in Amazon and they got these little presses and they do off by one. You oh, can yeah. actually yeah. buy it at any bookstore in the world. Uh, I will say that you won't get a super quality, but uh, and I'm the the new book is uh, you know I do buy local printing here and look at that quality of that printing that you know um, that's really good quality. Look at those pictures, and uh, you know. But again, if you're in um, in Europe like Gregory, is that you know it's going to cost more to ship it from here than just order it from your local bookstore and I, I get a percentage and I don't have to do anything. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate if you're in the USA, uh, order from me directly, astral-visions.com. How's that for a plug? Anyway, um, you want to start with my general description on how I see how it works, how it yes. creates shape? Yes. Okay. We, 
Okay, we need to get. Uh, can you see that slide? Yeah. Yes, we can see. Yes. Yes. Okay, you see the mouse. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this this is really there's a pattern as great uh, as Santos says there's a pattern going on. The sun is coming up to the. This, by the way, I believe these cycles happen every day as well as every year, every month with the moon, every nanosecond, every galactic rotation. <laughs> it's it's happening everywhere, you know, and the time doesn't matter with the new quantum uh, entanglement theory. There's that space doesn't make any difference. It's like they're all in the same. But the sun comes up. It's building. It started actually at Capricorn. So you can see this half, the sun is, this is the way they, as the ancients looked at it. They were from an earth view and they looked to the south and in the morning, what was rising on the eastern horizon is how they began the theory. In spring, Aries was in back, still is, it's exactly on the equator. And Aries was in back of the sun. So it, every uh, spring it was there. Then the next month, uh, Taurus was in back of the sun. In the next month, Gemini. Then at high noon, it was in, uh, of course, they couldn't see it, see it uh, the uh, constellations at noon, but it would be on the ascendant. Cancer would be on the ascendant in the morning when we were in that time of the year. So you can see that at this point, the sun isn't going up. Those people are self-directed, sunlight-directed. The sun is going down. We're entering the other half. We're going down with Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra's fall. And then, so you get that, you'll just kind of watch the, these people come on like they're, they're building energy or they're falling back down. And, and Libra's are kind of in the middle. Uh, Libra, Scorpio, Sag. Then Capricorn, of course, is where it climbs up. You kind of get the idea. That's the basic theory with it. Okay, now there's another thing here. I'll get over this in a minute. Is that within each season, there's this. This is actually running backwards because they, they've got the chart runs this way, but the process runs this Aries, Taurus, Gemini, and as it rotates this way, Aries comes up, then Taurus. But the first cardinal points are the cardinal signs. They are running in a direction. They are at a directional point. So they're going, Aries is coming at you, rather interesting, the opposite Libra runs sideways. <laughs> and, and, and Capricorn is climbing up the mountain. We'll see more details on these. And, and uh, Cancer's pulling down into the ocean. So you're gonna see that. We'll show that in the body language and then in a minute. And, but that's cardinality. Just remember if they're, they always seem directed then they're likely a cardinal sign or a cardinal sign moon if that or whatever. And then the next step, as uh, Greg, we got at Aquarius with a Taurus moon. He looks very fixed. He's very square features. It's kind of a boxing and it's caught in the middle. The fixed sign is caught in the middle. You know, they can't get out of it. They're locked in. They're anchored. They're square. They're holding. And that's what you see. Watch their energy. If they're holding, you know they're a fixed sign. Mm -hmm. And then, then they coming out of that, we we are taking, uh, we're moving it, ready to change for a season. So what do we got to do? We got to make a change. This is the total opposite of full charge, full stop, full. And then we take both of them. Here's the uh, <laughs> here's the cardinal, and here's the fix. Half and half. We get a Mobius pattern. I mean, watch watch their energies. If it's a Mobius pattern. In, in their mannerisms, you know they're a mutable sign. Is that clear? Yes. And of course, the sun's visual movement is this way, but actually it moves the other way around the sun. But, uh, you want to add anything to that, Santos? Can you comment uh, anything on how that fits? There's this yin-yang, this sine wave going on here as well as in the year. No, it, no, okay, no, you're good. Okay. Um, 
then the way you take these, so that's the patterns. And the next thing is the frequency, the vibration, the force, the force of expression, the manner of expression, the, the temperature of expression. And of course, that's the four elements, fire, air, earth, and water. And they go through the, as we know, through in an order. Each one counters fire of Aries is countered by earth, is, is followed by air, it's masculine energy, followed by water. And it, this, this is not in order, but you get an idea. This is the cover of the uh, Dance of the Zodiac book. I've been wanting to redo I'm going to redo the cover someday, but I've got to redo it anyway. There's a lot of mistakes in it, but um, not a lot, but... So we get the idea of the patterns. So let's take these elements and look at the fire signs. You can see the cardinality of Aries, very long face, charging mm -hmm. forward, mm -hmm. and Leo's holding that. This is the spirit. This is fire. This is light holding itself. Leo is fixed, and Sagittarius is going out to Jupiter and bouncing around and coming back and going all over the place. You'll see that mutable energy with Sag, the holding with Leo. And that's pretty clear. And then, of course, the opposite of the fire, of course, is Earth. Every fire sign is followed by an Earth sign. Taurus is fixed. Uh, mutable Virgo. These are very old drawings, by the way. I finally got and of course, Capricorn is moving up. Remember, I said it was at the bottom and it starts that up or climb. So it, the mannerism is to move up. You know, it's a Capricorn. They, they're looking up at you all the time. They kind of always looking up, as, as you can see it in their body language. We'll talk about that in a bit, too, as we get to each side. Of course, the energy changes, it becomes vaporous, it becomes gassy it becomes light light and fl fluffy and these are the air signs that's a horrible drawing of gemini that's an old one like i said i could never make gemini look like i wanted the newer ones are better though so it's mutable they're thinking they're doing the sorting of ideas libra is mm -hmm. putting them in order and balancing them out aquarius is fixing on the idea locking into the intuitive intuitive consciousness of the universe fixed fixing you can see and if you look like you're aquarius friends we'll talk more about it later but there there you can see the idea of cardinal fixed mutable and of course last and not least is water it completes the process it's the the universal solvent that pulls all of this in the physical form cancer as we remember capricorn was going up Cancers pulling down into their little shell, kind of down on the bottom of the seashore, or the, the little pond, and Scorpio's going deeper down to the deep caverns below, fixing deep mysteries. And Pisces is blending them both together. <laughs> I hope I don't, you know, these are silly cartoons, but I think they're fun. <laughs> and the Pisces is uh, mutable. And so you get the idea. And the last comment here before we go to the signs is, um, what they do? Is remember that this is also seen in the body, the body language. Uh, I've got a did my video on a walk through the zodiac. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see where each part of the body is ruled by a different sign, Aries, Taurus, shoulders, Gemini. So what happens is they, the, the force within the person, Aries, it's all in the head, so they rush forward head first. And, uh, and Taurus is the opposite, locks down, feet ankle, bulls the legs, they lock into the earth and they hardly move. And it's all in the shoulders. You can see the shoulders leaning forward, but holding down, not rushing forward. And with Gemini, we're rushing forward, but we're going one way with one step, one, one way with the other hand. The hands are like propellers as they move forward, carrying them forward. And last but not least, of course, is Cancer Crab is, as I said, they're pulling down. They usually hold their, their chest down and 
back a little and the hands are kept closed just below it. That's not quite right, the drawing, but uh, anyway, you get the idea. Does, does that follow? You want to add anything there? Nope. Okay, go. Okay. Oh, we go. Okay, we're ready for the first sign. Yeah. Yes. No doubt the most important sign in the zodiac. Don't you agree, Santos? Yep. Aries, <laughs> the Lamb of God, number one. Yeah, number one. Other than Ali. I'm number 10. I, I'm sorry for Tauruses. They're number two. <laughs> yeah, the moon influence. Anyway, you can kind of, these are the uh, later drawings. You can see I really define the arc of the face, the, the ram look, and, and the double crown. A lot of them have double crowns in their forehead. Uh -huh. Reddish hair, double crowns. Uh, I think, uh, I'd say a 30% from my, what I've talked to people. You got a double crown, Santos? Yet I do. I've got uh, twirls, little uh, curly little bits there. Yep, I've got the ram's horns. Mm -hmm. Well, in my old age, Capricorn, the uh, tree line is so far up the mountain, there's very little uh, foliage up there for myself. But <laughs> but you can see the eyes, they kind of sweep up to to the sides, like the, the, the ram is, uh, is uh, you know, the side of the face the nose comes forward they got a very concave face i think we can see this here. can i drop you down there will that drop you out you no no your... get rid of that. it's in the way get rid of that yep so right. uh, so you can see when they come forward they got a very concave face actually the chin is very recessed and it all comes forward and moves sweeps to the back and there's a lot of that with Sagittarius, too, because the ram and, and the centaur. And the head forward and the curve of the back charging forward, we see that similar curve with the Marvs of Scorpio. And, and then they, they run forward, full blast. Okay, uh, what I've done here, am I... Any, you want to make a comment? Uh, anything else on the body language? Do you want to add anything? Just jump in. Well, uh, I wanted to ask you. I wanted to ask you about the um, the point you make in your book about the upturned eyebrows. Can you show that? On uh, um, Santos, I mean Aries. Yep, yep, Aries. The yeah. upturned eyebrows of Aries. Yeah, that's yep. probably just George. Oh, okay. Yeah, just keep going. Okay, so we got uh, broad teeth, a thin upper lip, and just like a sheep, they don't have a big upper lip. Uh, actually, they have a little bigger mouth than that. Actually, they're pretty close. I've worked on this a long time, every one of these. So, But they don't have, <laughs> you think some of them are big mouths, but they're not. Just kidding, just kidding. And uh, but the hair sweeps to the back. You can see it over here. Uh -huh. And uh, so that's that. Is that uh, you got that one? Let's go back and look at these features in some real people and show how it shows in the sun signs. These are Aries sun signs, and these are people with Aries rising. Now you. John Lennon looks more like an Aries bone structure, bone structure. The time of day is bone structure. It's the solid point on the earth is the rising sign. The uh, sun is out there in the heavens. The point on the earth is the physical structure of your ascendant. The, I, I insist it's the bone structure. You could, that's what I look at first. I, I ignore their expressions of flesh when they react and project. I just look at the bone structure. Look at that Aries bone structure. This is a Taurus over here, Barbara Streisand. Oh my gosh, she looks like an Aries. Look at the long neck, the, yes. the ears, 
and the, the big snout is what I usually associate with. And we see them over here. Uh, the Aries look, Aries look. And of course, these are the two Aries pioneers who went where no one has gone before. <laughs> you know, Leonard Nimoy and Bill Shatner from Star Trek. Um, Star Wars, uh, Star Wars. Uh, Star Trek. Yeah, the other one. Star Trek. There. Got a block there. And then uh, Helen Redding is a Scorpio. She's got a little more intense eyes. But look at the shape of that bone structure. We get Aries skin. He's a ver He's got a very concave for James Colbert. Bette Midler, Sagittarius, but Aries rising. Ron Howard, for Pisces, he has quite a long face. And he's got the strength, you know, he's an excellent director. Of course, yes. we've... So you kind of see how that works in the Ascendant and in the, in the Sun sign itself. These people are projecting en energy out. These are just not projecting, they're just being, they're just there for the moment. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah. the Eddie's has a eyebrow, it's quite uh, thick, it's bigger. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But, it, you know, of course, a lot of it, you know, so most of these movie stars, I pick movie stars because we know their mannerisms and everything. we can see clips of them and watch them, that's how I studied them. But, you know, they, they're always well quaffed and well made up. But uh, John wasn't. But I, the early reports on John Lennon, he was a Libra with Libra rising when I first, back then when I first started. And I said, no way, he's an Aries, because I was just starting to see what Aries looked like. And he was so aggressive and assertive. And he'd get up in front of those cameras and just, it was Aries energy that he'd start talking peace and love and he would calm down, become more of a Libra. And they had their AM, PM backwards, so they finally got it corrected 10 years, 20 years later. They, somebody said, no, that's wrong. And he, the latest information says Aries rising. Isn't that interesting? Yep. So, My so, so what can we say about Aries? Um, well, most, I see a very yeah. defined, a very defined angular face. There's the definition on the face, uh, the facial yeah. features is quite, um, quite impressive. You, you also can see that iron energy, you know, the iron uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. marsh uh, Aries, which I define, I uh, identify with Aries, iron. But, but but the angle the angle thing you talked about is the angle is very directed. This is directed. This is directed. It isn't twisted like a mutable sign. Um, let let's um, let's look at uh, Mary Lou Henner. She has a, a Virgo moon and and I don't have her. Send it. This gal, J Sally Jessica Parker, is a Capricorn moon. Uh, that doesn't show there. We'll probably see it elsewhere. But she's got a Gemini rising. So you notice she's a little mutable. She's not straight across like a, a, a um, what in the heck is. I don't I'll have play some. I don't have information on uh, Barbara Streisand. I forgot to write it down. Anyway, oh, she's a Aries rising sign, and and uh, oh, I don't know what her she what her moon is. Anyway, I'm sorry, I meant. But uh, here, uh, guess which one of these has a Taurus moon, and which one has a uh, Aquarius moon. They're both six moons. Think of their... This on the left one. Yeah, that's uh, Leonard Nimoy. He's also a Scorpio rising, or a Cancer. 
he's got a cancer moon and a Scorpio rising. So if you can see the strong Aries stuff there with the Scorpio, the strong stout and but he's an Aquarius and a Taurus. So he's but he always played the role of everybody said he was Gemini, 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 because that's the role he played as um, as Spock in uh, Star Trek or yeah, Star Trek. So we get fooled by the roles they play. Once you start watching them when they're not acting, I, I always like to watch people when they're um, when they're um, guests on a talk show and they're themselves. They're not playing a role. Does that that makes sense yes. because then you start seeing the way they react and the way they project their sun signs. Anything else about? It? I think that pretty well does it for Aries. Awesome sign, number one. Okay. Okay. All right. This is um, this is Taurus. You see that fixed quality. This was the first one I drew. My dad had eyes like that. Remember, I'm talking about smelling the roses, you know, yes, I yes, yes. got into that trip a little bit when I, my nostrils widening. I just locked down on that flower. It's the only flower I can find. But and then the shoulders again, it's but rules the shoulders for this part of the body leads areas of the head. And here's Adele, a lot of uh, music people, uh, good voice people Voices, uh, yeah. have a golden Voices ruled by Taurus. Uh, Jack Nicholson is a Leo rising and a Taurus, so he is looks like the most fixed of any you know, any of them. Uh, and he has a Taurus decant on his Virgo moon. No, yeah. Virgo Moon Taurus Deke, and he's a Taurus decant of Taurus. So we see those bovine eyes for Clooney. I'm yeah. sorry. And this is Michelle Pfeiffer. Um, we'll see. Gemini Ascendant. She's. Yeah, Gemini. And remember when she was playing the cat lady in um, Batman? I don't know if you watched many of our American weird movies. Well, we do a lot of superhero stuff. But when she played Catwoman, she was so mercuric. Her hands were flying all over. She was jittery. She did played the, the neurotic Catwoman and did an excellent job. And she loves to talk. And But you can see the bovine eyes, the, the fixed brow coming down here. See how that drops down? And he's looking up a little more, but it's still... This holding, holding down to the shoulders. That's the way you see the body look when they look at you. What do you want? Well, you'll see that face. They'll pull their head down, look kind of pull their head into their shoulders and look at you from that angle. Here he's get we see a little more of the Leo. His Leo mask is uh, out there. I'm here. So um, anything else on uh, let's 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 take a look at some other people with Taurus. Of course, we mentioned uh, Barbara Streisand. This is Bono. Bono looks a little jagged, doesn't he? He has a Capricorn rising sign and a Scorpio moon. But look how jagged and jagged, craggy he is. There isn't that smooth Venusian stuff we see with the uh, Pisces rising here. He looks a little rounder. Clooney has Pisces rising, but he has a Capricorn moon. Um, what did I miss here? Oh, that's uh, Kirsten Dunst. Uh, oh, I didn't write down her information. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, she's a Leo... Ascend it and moon. So she has a 
a little look to her. It looks a little brighter, a little more fire there, not as grounded down as, let's say, a Capricorn ascendant. See how that mass changes the energy? Well, look how light and lit up she is yes. with Leo rising. Capricorn right looks a little gray. But does that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. So uh, Sagittarius, Daryl Hannah. Have you ever saw the the, the mermaid a movie? Uh, uh, she was in that. She is a Taurus ascendant. Even though she's a Sag, she she get a hint of mutability. But uh, you definitely can see the Taurus shape to that Sagittarius longer face. It isn't as square as we see over here with a, like we see here. And my favorite uh, is Queen Latifah. She's a Pisces. A one walking around in a daze, but she's like a bull in a china shop. But she looks like a Taurus. Oh, she's got giant, huge shoulders uh, and those big bovine eyes. Salman Rusty is a Gemini. You ever see him on the talk show? I always looked at him. I said, oh, he's a Taurus. He's a Taurus or a Leo. Look at all the hair on the face. Um, his eyebrow His eyebrow looks like Scorpio eyebrow. Uh, Scorpio eyes, yeah, it could be, or the combination of... No, um, the eyebrows, the eyebrows, the way they go, they make a V-shape. Is that, is that Taurian or Scorpio? Uh, no, it's a little too sharp for uh, Taurus. They're, they're more straight across. Yeah, like the guy below, they, Dan oh, Rather. Uh, I'm trying to find his... Um, Dan Rather has the um, has the flat eyebrows, whereas Salman Rushdie makes a V shape. They resemble the Scorpio uh, opposite yeah. Taurus. And I don't so, have any. Uh, I'm sorry, I lost that one. I don't have any uh, data on him. I didn't get the data on him. Nineteen of June, nineteen forty-seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you need you need you need his ascendant, brother. Um, yeah, ascendant, I tell you now. Uh, boy, I don't know. Maybe uh, got. I think you're pretty close with Scorpio with that big B. Yeah, man. It's the opposite sign. I I do this all the time. I guess people's sun sign through their opposite sign. The yeah, opposite sign is always there. It's always there. Taurians will always have that eagle. Yes, yes. Look, mm -hmm. see. Yeah. I could uh, bring up the other computer and find his data, but ascendant, I, I it's a Taurus ascendant, Salman Rushdie, and a double Gemini, a Sun and Moon Gemini. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yep. Yeah. And see, on to his right, Buster Keaton, he's got the Libra and flat eyebrows. There's a big yeah. difference between these two guys. Look at Salman Rushdie with his Gemini. Gemini, I would say the Scorpio opposite Taurus and the Gemini which contorts all the facial features is the reason for those eyebrows. Yeah, yeah. I may be yep. But we still got a, a physical ascendant is giving us something. Be, be, we don't have the exposed nozzles. We got a big beak coming down. I think you might be right on Scorpio. Scorpio rising. I don't have the data, but now interesting with Buster Keaton, who was finest uh, silent film star this, of them all. I thought even better than Chaplin, but he has a Libra. You know, I didn't write these down. I think he's a Libra rising too, but he he's a Taurus Libra Libra Venus. He ne he never made any expressions. He was they called him Stone Face. Isn't that a perfect name for a Taurus rising Stone Face? Yep. He never laughed. He never expressed anything. He looked like that in every scene. A house would fall around him, and he just 
turned his head a little bit like, oh, the house fell down. And he, he was just funny, you know, but stone face, Taurus rising. Dan Rattler looks pretty well. That's why I'm not getting the same eyebrows on Rather. Rather has a. Mm, I didn't write these down. I should have. I did the as over here, but and uh, Tony Morrison. She certainly is Aquarius, and uh, but she sure shows the bovine much like um, Queen Latifah. So you can see where the bone structure. What I'm saying, I don't know his rising sign. It's Taurus. He's a Gemini, but there's something there. There's something on his ascendant. That's uh, that's what it is. Uh, the, I check him now. So he's got uh, South mode in eighth house. What what Santos said uh, uh, yeah. influences between two and eight, and and it's really his north node is second house. Sal yeah, Salman Rushdie. That's why. That's why his this eyebrow is connection with with Scorpio, opposite Taurus uh, house. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I got you. Yeah, that's good. Anyway, it's fascinating. There's so many. There's so many um, variables. Oh yes, yeah. yes. Uh, I'm gonna got a little thing at the end. I'm gonna show how a planet on the ascendant. Uh, are you familiar with this Steve Blue Senny, the one that was in Fargo? Did you ever see that crazy movie? And I don't know if you get that over on the other side of the world, but it yep. was a Steve Blue Semi. Yep. He, every every role he gets, he gets killed in. He got chopped up in the um, <laughs> cement mixer, the uh, ch chipper, and and. Uh, and he's a uh, oh I can't, he's a sad you wouldn't believe it but he's I can't even remember what he is now oh he's got a lot of Saturn on his ascendant he looks so gray that's what I was going to say gray he's got Saturn on his ascendant he looks gray anyway anything else here on Taurus nope. Next sign. Okay, next sign. Gemini. Yay. <laughs> the, right, right what I see in Gemini, the, the eyes is never is never symmetric. Is is one eye is just just moving uh, opposite the second eye. Yeah. And this is why uh, I think this is like my. I came up with this about a year ago. The, the key thing to sell Gemini from the others, you got all this air, so it never stabilizes too much. But the key thing here is this part of the face. This is a big cube here. And notice right there, that part of the face moves forward from the for top half. Same here. Same here. Not so much here. He's got sad rising, I think. Uh, he's sad rising, right? And a Virgo moon and a Gemini. So he's got mutable. So the, but if you catch him in another pose, you probably see how this part of the... You get the idea on how that part comes forward from the back? So the eyes and the forehead sit back from the jaw assembly. Yep, I, and, it's I, and I, I got a little bit of it here. That's an old drawing. I got to work on that. But hey, after 42 years. I, <laughs> but uh, mutability, uh, usually wide teeth, and, uh, you know, the rabbit, Angela Jolie. Um, Bill Moyers is an Aquarius ascendant. Aries Moon, he, Aquarius, he's in media. He was a journalist, or still is. Uh, Ian, Ian McLock, McKellen, who is Gandalf, Sag Rising, perfect persona for 
Gandalf the wizard, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah, especially with his uh, Virgo moon. Any wizard, anything, anyone with Virgo in their chart, uh, sun, rising or moon, they tend to be very um, eccentric looking, very contorted, like the hermit in the tarot card, very uh, wizard-like. Um, yeah. They look like gypsies, the, the proper, you know, um, vagabond-looking wanderer on the earth type, aren't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get cast for their basic persona. And, of course, this Sag persona was perfect for Gandalf. Uh, you know, as you know, and of course, when uh, Gemini's come into the room, they're going to fly in, feet barely touch the ground, their hands are going to be going up and down like propellers pulling them forward <laughs> or spinning around, I should say, like a, propellers. And just watch those hands move in out, out front, and that's your first clue and, and kind of the uh, mutable eyes. And then one brow, of course, is lower than the other. Uh, yeah, it looks like, and they got a pretty empty nose. It's, and there's always a little gap in the tip of it. Uh, you can see it there. They have that Sagittarius, that, that uh, Sag rising kind of takes care of the thin nose. But most of their noses are rather thin bridges. Uh, Bill Moyers. Uh, that's where, notice the way his nose goes this way and his chin goes this way. Her nose goes that way and chin that way. Nose that way, chin that way. So that's mutable. Nose that way, chin that way. And he's a double mutable. Nose that way, chin that way. So you get the idea of mutable, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mercury, Mercury, Mercury. What were you going to say, Santos? Yep, Mercury, the hermaphrodite. So it's a twin. So what you're yeah. looking for is um, you're looking for they appear to have two eyebrows, two upper lids and lips, four yeah. cheeks. Uh, when you see someone with four cheeks, that's a Gemini or a Virgo, any, anyone under Mercury, really. Um, yeah. they, have, they have two faces. There's... There, Every Gemini, you can just see two, uh, one face overlaid on top of another one. That's what I see. I can pick them. The easiest sign to pick for me is uh, uh, Gemini, then Libra for me. Mm. Now, the, and that bedding here, you can sort of see the double face. It's like it's a face within the face. Uh, she has Libra moon. I don't have a rising. Uh, uh, yep. Yep, the Libra moon gives her face somewhat yeah. balanced. It's very round. Yeah. And, uh, okay, let's go check out some other Libra uh, Geminis. Okay, sun signs on the left. Clint Eastwood, guess his rising sign. And there's a net again. You can see the Libra there more than the other one. She's not as... But you can see the natural mutability anderson cooper cnn he's a gemini uh i'm just looking for another two faces in there and of course your famous australian over there nicole kidman hey they're not all americans on here samples we threw in a couple of australians Nice. Just to make you happy. <laughs> you probably don't know half of these people. I know the kids don't know them. I'm sure. Who's that? Who's that? Phyllis Diller. Who's that? You know, Michael Caine. I've never heard of him. I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you remember. Maybe you know, not the now, Phyllis Diller, but Michael Caine, yes. Yeah. So when we get the ascendant, let's look at the bone structure. Actually, that idea of the being bone structure with Gemini, notice how Mitch Jagger's lower half shoots out over the top half. He's a Leo. But look at, and look at these lines given two faces at ones. Yeah, uh, when, the, when the Gemini is smiling, it looks like Eskimo, yeah? The, the eyes, you can't see the eyes. Yeah. 
It's quit it, yeah. yeah. And she's a Leo, but she's got Gemini rising. I think it's probably, it, you start, I, I'm getting into decants. I'm just going to guess with that real tight, downdrawn smile. Uh, she might be a uh, uh, Aquarius decant of Gemini ascendant. But again, th that we're getting so many variables, but I actually, some of the things in the book, I, I have uh, references to all the people that show their, very the, strong. This, this is the, the Leo subside. Hmm? She has a Leo somewhere. Yeah. And uh, John Denver, Gemini rising. Look at that. I mean, he's a Capricorn. And Rocky Mountain High. You can see the wide cheekbones of Capricorn. We'll get to that in a bit. But look at the Gemini rising, the dip edge of the nose, the thin nose up here. Mike, uh, Michael Kane, uh, Pisces, right? Uh, he's a Pisces son, but he's Gemini rising. I just see the twisted features. And it's, it's, it's not as obvious with water signs. It seems to be filled in with rounded qualities with water. So it's, you don't get that air type thing. Michelle, as we mentioned, is is a Taurus with a Gemini ascendant, and Mich and Cancer, Phyllis Diller. You ever look, watch her? You know that cackle she had, that Cancerian cackle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. So it's it's you know, all of these expressions. These uh, Gemini's are the people that really are good with you know. And in ourself, our Gemini, we need to analyze, use our minds to sort through so we can get to the, the next sign in the zodiac, which is so we can find our how we feel about things. Thinking brings the thought. Thoughts bring feelings. So we deal with our thoughts, we get feelings. We deal with our feelings, we could uh you know, we could become fire again, fire, earth, air, water, fire. We can become, find a action again, movement. So cancer is the moon face. It's like there's a big circle moon here. <laughs> the eyebrow looks like a mo half a moon. Yeah. And then there's these little markings here and the way that this lines right here are the same lines you see on the shell of a crab, that little marking on the back of a crab shell. And these lines up here, that's the crab shell. Isn't that interesting? Of course, I've just made that up, but it sure seems to work. <laughs> I, the, the ancients were very wise and very tuned into nature. They saw all this. It was as real as television is unreal to us today, you know. So, because they were tuned in, they saw this. They were very simple, grounded to nature people. Mm -hmm. And rather, rather small, tight mouths. Uh, and they're a little pucker factor, but small, pulled in from the sides. A little stubby nose, round on the edge. I got to work on that drawing. I never did get around to redo my wall. And uh, Cancer, Crab, Ringo Star. Uh, what about the big giant temples? The, they've got big moon temples, haven't they? Yeah, well, that, so I, I actually... I, I used to think it was higher, but it tends to drop down a little bit, but it really drops down a lot. These temples drop down for Capricorn, so you get this really serious look with Capricorn, but it's the same idea. That round, it's just just almost perfectly centers the eyes. It pulls them down like they're pulling them down to the bottom of the ocean, the body yeah. language. 
just pulling them down. That look, they look at you and they're pulling down and as they look at you, hello, I'm a crab. <laughs> Hi. Yep. And, um, the, wavy, the wavy triangle between the eyes. Can you I'll highlight that? This, uh, this one here? Yeah. Yep, That's the wavy it. triangle. Yeah. And that is really, uh, those markings are very similar on the crab shell. It doesn't have a nose and it doesn't have the brows, but it comes up in curves and then it creates the, the, the bulge at one end of the crab shell and then the big itself. I, I, little things like that I started noticing. Ring of Stars got that round smile look. Uh, Ringle Star is a Pisces ascendant. A Scorpio decant. I'm not sure if that was Scorpio decant of his son. I think it's. He's pretty light. I don't see much Scorpio there. Uh, Linda Ronstead is. I'm glad I wrote these down. I, I was almost didn't do it. She is a Sag rising you know and see her on stage she she was pretty horsey she and a virgo moon there's that virgo moon for you that look of innocence you know that protective uh emotional shield of the motions there of a virgo moon we talked about that earlier you, you said it beautifully santos i can't remember what you said but something like that. And Beryl Streep is a Leo rising. And a Taurus moon. You can see the Taurus quality as well as the Leo. See, the Leo is the big, big head. Yes, big jaw. Yeah, it's like up here is twice the size as you expect out of here. The uh, She doesn't have a big head. And then Robin Williams is a Scorpio, a Senate Pisces, triple water, an emotional basket case. No, yes. it was sad that he had a past on. He was very humorous. But you can see his, he is actually in that picture. It's a cross between a, a Pisces and a, uh, and a uh, Cancer Sun. He's... Pisces, Moon, Cancer, he's reacting and expressing himself at the same time. We get some Cancer and we get some Pisces. So I just love that picture. It just strikes me as perfect combination of, um, of um, Cancer and, and Pisces. So anyway. Okay, any other comments on uh, Cancer before we go to more faces? Oops, sorry. Did you want to say anything else? Okay, I guess not. Just nope. tell me. Don't be afraid to interrupt. <laughs> okay. Again, we got the same people. I'm not, I started duplicating them when I put this together because I've already talked about them rather than, to, we're getting, uh, we just talked about them before so I don't have to talk to them again, but you, and from here on, we're going to see the same. I had new ones in the previous ones. Okay, Cancer Ascendant, Virgo, Stephen King. Uh, Virgo, great writer, mental. Scorpio, Joni Mitchell. She's got it. Look at that Cancer look. Sagittarius, look at the big Sagittarius dome, but uh, Cancer, look at that. Look at that. Those, something about that part of it suggests uh, Cancer rising rounds it's but you uh, but sagittarius suns really have this big giant bulging for forehead that shoots to the back just like a horse and we'll look at that later gemini angelina jolie has cancer rising that sure shows her cancer rising doesn't it mm -hmm. and 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 the emotion uh, Lisa Kudrow is a Leo. She was the hippie.
flower child in friends and uh but the caring cancer ascendant she was always taking care of everybody they liked her cancer look so she was mothering everybody and aquarius jack lemon hey he looks a lot like you greg yeah <laughs> it's that fixing to get the eyes there's a little air in your eyes but you got taurus rising was it Am I got you right? You're Aquarius, right? I'm Aquarius Zodiac, Virgo rising. Mm -hmm. Taurus moon. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so we got Cancer. Okay, Leo. We went from Cardinal. We're going to Fixed. We're following the same Cardinal Fixed. Then we'll go to Mutable. Because each one follows the other, takes the other, and keeps building the process as we go through the year and the day. As we go through every hour, every minute, the same thing happens within a microscopic atoms, too. That's how you build the tree of life out of just the elements. Okay, very proud look. Yeah, proud. Chest forward. Strong chins, wide stubby noses, wide bridge, and the eyes that kind of just fix on you. They're fixing on you, letting you know they're there. They're, they're not fixing on them, but, but they're also fixing on themselves. Uh, uh, how would I word that? They're fixing on their, their own light, saying, I'm going to make it shine. And you can almost see the light in their eyes as they fix. And they got a very jolly features, tight upper lip, just like a lion. You would see it over here, a larger lower lip, tight upper lip, tight upper lip. But uh, and then they strut in the room, chest forward, like uh, they're walking through their kingdom. <laughs> yeah. now, I got a Leo moon, by the way, Greg. If you didn't know that, ah, uh, yeah, a Leo moon. Oh. So it's, I get a little fire going here, lots of Capricorn. So anyway, the uh, these signs are over here with Leo, Jennifer Lawrence, one of the hottest stars going. She's making so much money. But you never guess what uh, decant her, uh, her son is in for a Leo. Aries. She's, a, she's an action star. You know, the Hunger Games. Aries, Aries, Aries. But she's got, puts on quite a show. She has a Sag rising too, so there's more of that athletic persona. She's Sag rising and an Aries decant of her son and Aquarius moon. I don't see the Aquarius moon in that picture, but she's, you catch her in some moments when she's reacting, her whole face becomes Aquarius. Uh, Melanie Griffith. She she has a typical uh, Leo eyes and jaw. Oh yeah, look at those. Yeah, uh, cat's cat's eyes. And then the uh, broad, flat. Not, I don't want to say flat. They really get flat with Scorpio. They really kind of really flatten out and hang down, but they're. They're very blocky. They're like blocks, just like you see on the jaw of a mm -hmm. lion. Um, no, she's a Taurus ascendant and an Aquarius moon. Uh -huh. So she's triple fixed. So, you, But she strikes me as more mercuric. She must have... A, she's quite... McCarrick and most of her roles. Maybe she's got a Mars. Their physical energy can throw you off with Mars. 
watch them when they're entering a room or when they're working. Yeah. What's your Mars, Santos? My Mars is in Leo, in the heart sign. Uh huh. Big passionate heart. Yeah. As, oh, as you, yeah, I watch you move around your apartment and you kind of strut around a little bit. Me, I trip over everything. I got, uh, uh, I got Mars and Sag as well as my ascendant, so I trip over everything. I always, I, 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 I have a Mars in Sagittarius also. You, you're kind of clumsy, just to be nice. Uh, trip over stuff. Uh. If you get really overworked and you're exhausted, then you become more animated and more mutable and you can't control it. And it really becomes hard when you worked real hard and you went beyond with your Mars and yes, you're exhausted. Yes. I do that all the time. So, But can it's a good place. Go? What's that? Uh, can you uh, show the flat, the flat cheekbones? The, the, the flat cheekbones, yeah, right there. You call them the blocked cheeks. What's the blocked cheeks? Well, they're, they're, it's like there's a rectangle right here. There's a rectangle. Then it drops down, then there's another rectangle. You can see the rectangle, 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 square, square, leo, leo, fix, fix. Well, the, can I just add? Can I just add here, just for the listeners, <clears throat> so <clears throat> all the fixed signs, Leo, Taurus, we've already done two, we're coming to Scorpio and Aquarius, you'll see that square fixed face, it's a cube. Then you go to your cardinals, uh, Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, Aries is the long face, Cancer and Libra are the round faces, so the cardinals seem to have round and long the fixed a square and the mutable are well mutable <laughs> yeah mutable they're skewed i like uh, twisted twisted yeah like, like we saw in gemini uh, skewed uh, this is Scan stanley kubrick uh uh you know great one of the greatest movie directors of all time is does he look like in most um Leos tend to have excessive hair on their face if they're male. And most of you don't know Garrison Keillor, but he was he's a radio celebrity, did the uh, Prairie Home Companion radio show for a long time. And he has um, Pisces rising, I think. I don't have it written down. I may be wrong. But uh, definitely, he's easy going and light, but he just put on the most charming show. But he sure those, shows Leo, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Those three on the right, the, the two girls, and that, that, that pillar there, they are very, very lion feline. Lion, lion, yeah. Oh, my yes. God. That's just a roaring lion. <laughs> this is the cats, the typical cats. Incredible. You can't miss it. The cat. Uh, cool uh, cat. Yeah, he's cancer rising. Robert De Niro, cancer yep. sent it Pisces moon. So he's a little rounder and not as doesn't a very it doesn't doesn't have the blocked features. They they seem to be rounded a little, but we don't get the solid blocking like we do here with the cheekbones. Yeah, well, I I get another cat from De Niro. I get a jaguar. I get a panther. He is more sort of uh, um, one of those uh, inconspicuous cats. The, the others on the right tend to have a lot of lion. But you yeah. go down to Stanley Kubrick and you can also see a little bit of uh, lynx and all those other cats that are very, very uh, um, like a cheetah. He's got uh, the guy to the right of him has got a lot of cheetah in him. Now, Kubrick is a um, Virgo. A Scorpio moon and ascendant, so he is triple fixed. You can see the Scorpio. There's your Scorpio. That's those are rising up oh, yeah, much yeah. more than here. We're we're more elegant and sophisticated with the Leo. We're elegant and sophisticated, but here it's intensity. It's pulls up. 
Yeah, and Scorpio is a secrets. All the secret influence in his films uh, for Stanley Kubrick films is is it's probably Scorpio influence the secrets. Yeah. Anyway, that's amazing. It it, it it's mind boggling that uh, you know an hour difference in the day can change your whole physical structure. So everybody is what they were supposed to be. <laughs> you know, they were born for for that reason to be that special part of the crystal circle that makes all all things possible. Okay, here we got the same people. Now let's look at the ascendants. Oh, check out Seagal Aries with Leo rising. He is exactly the same as me. I have an Aries sun and a leo ascendant and i can see that i can see the eyebrows the nose uh -huh. the yeah and yeah. bitterness well you've got a pisces moon don't you yep softens it up a bit yeah you're you, you uh you don't have steven seagal is an action guy he likes to beat people up and show how tough he is aries and he's a Leo, and he's going to really put on a show when he beats people up. I never did like his movies, but I like the the look of the fixed look of an Aries. But it's still a quite a, lo a little longer face with Long Aries face, yeah. than we usually mm -hmm. see. And uh, Sagittarius T. D. Turner. Oh, uh, hey guys, guys, what? While, while we're on this one, while you just said that, Bill. I'm going to interject here. Um, I'm Arian and my son is Libran. I'm going to I'm going to provide Greg a photo of me and my son. Okay, oh, I'm oh. going to provide, and you will okay. see we are we are in the same photo. You see, my uh, head is twice as long as my son's. My son's head is small and round and Libran, and mine is long and bold and Arian. So I'll put that in. Okay, mm -hmm. do I do I got to take mine down or will yours pop up? I just came back in. Okay, where is it? I thought you were Pisces. I guess I was wrong. I was. It's been a long time since I talked to Santos. A couple of years. Okay, here we are. We we got all this. It, yeah, I can see that. You you're really uh, so Libra. Well, your 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 quest for ideas emotionally, you know. Then I can't believe you know all this stuff about sounds and languages. I'm horrible. I can, I never learned another language because I could never hear the difference in the tones. Huh. Well, that's what I specialized in. I was a uh, bilingual from birth, and then became a polyglot in my teens. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, I was visual, as you see. I was looking at stuff. I could Tina, see it. Mm -hmm. I said that Tina Turner, the the she has a Leo ascendant, yeah. Uh, Tina Turner, top right. Uh, sun. Yeah, Leo. Leo. Said, said, this said. is Marilyn, and uh, so does. No, uh, uh, Tina Turner. Tina Turner. Oh, Tina. Yeah, yeah, she does. Boy, she put on a show, doesn't she? Yeah, she, 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 has, she, she always had a very bu bushy hair, yeah, big yeah. hair. Yeah. So this is also a typical uh, characteristic for Leo, Leo look. Yeah, but but uh, the Sages, the squid and eyes, and they're we're getting the Sage middle bill. We don't have that uh, look of the eyes that are locking okay. in on you there, but I. But I, I went for the facial shape. That's why I picked the picture, not the expression, because she was being somewhat sad. But it showed the shape of the bone structure. Mm -hmm. Now, Mar Marilyn Monroe is really interesting. Gemini, breathy. Hi, I'm Marilyn. Hi. <laughs> that was her whole gig. Hi. And, 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 and of course, and she was very bright and intelligent, but every saw, but he just saw her as a beautiful object. She was a Leo. She'd walk in the room and everybody would turn and look at her. She'd get all the attention. That Leo ascended was what everybody saw in 
you know, she didn't get what she really was, was her Gemini son. And, and, and I believe she has an Aquarius moon, too. Aquarius moon, yes. Aquarius moon. Uh, yeah. Uh, I believe so, yeah. Because you can see that, too. So she had that wonderful sense of intellect and ideas, but everybody saw her as a sex object, as a, as a, as a you know, just a gorgeous, you know, Yeah, show. Jimmy and I are sending and and you no, know, she's sent it, a Gemini moon a uh, sun, but Leo ascended. Everybody saw her ascending. That's what I'm trying to say. So, uh, so well, sadly, I, she wasn't did get. She, that was her handy. She did. It made her very famous and well to do, but she wasn't very happy. So you know, and of course, Taurus. With Leo rising, we did him before. Meryl Streep, we did with cancer. Um, I think that pretty well covers Air Leo, doesn't it? Yes. Yep, yep. I can mm -hmm. tell you by experience that the Leo ascendant, all those guys in the black and white there on the right, um, I can see that Leo body, the Leo in the body. It's in mm -hmm. their body. And... Um, when you walk in a room, if you've got a Leo rising or a Cancer, but mostly the Leo because it's the sun sign and Cancer's the moon sign, because of the size of the sun and the moon, it gives them a big sort of a, out, a bigger than uh, life sort of uh, energy. And, and, and people just, I, I cannot enter a room or go anywhere like and sort of just be uh, unnoticed. It just... Um, I don't know. It makes a statement. Yeah. It is. It's, 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 it's magnetic. Yeah, you you walk in and those Leo risings just everybody is immediately attracted to him. I mean, just <laughs> Timberlake. I mean, when he he's kind of a, a flighty little Aquarius, but man, when he gets walks on stage, you know, see him on Saturday Night Live or something. What a show person! He just walks in and there he is. He's the king. Or the Queen yes. of Maryland. There's a lot of movie industry. Leo dominating movie industry. Yeah. He doesn't have the uh, big chest of a Leo. Most Leo ascendants have quite a large chest area because they ruled the heart. Remember where we had that part of yeah. it? Yes, yes. And uh, uh, anyway, but anyway, okay. On to uh, Virgo. Okay. Uh -huh. The best sign of the zodiac, except for Capricorn, and and the other, you know, they're actually they're all great. I don't like to put any sign down because I find that everyone is important, and I'm, uh, you know, it's important that we understand what people are and what their purpose is. With their sun sign, I believe is their purpose, is the what they will contribute to make the world better. That's kind of the theme I've been working on for a long time. Kind of a hint of it in Dance of the Zodiac. And then the moon, what would you say about that then? If the sun's the purpose, the moon is the? The moon is how you work with, you interact and work with other. Okay, and the rising? Uh, it's your, it's your, home it's your base it's the place to where you work from it's the yep. as you walk in the room you're 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 here now right now doing right now and this is my it's almost a uh, it's it's the now and and and, and this where the sun was at that moment on the eastern horizon it's the point on the earth it's the spot it's the it's the spot you're in. It isn't yep. a spot like a Leo. It isn't a throne, but it's the spot. With Leo rising, you walk in and that everybody sees you as a Leo with a Virgo rising. Oh, here, take this. You can handle this. I don't want to deal with all these details. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I know a lot of Virgo risings that 
really don't deal with details because there are other signs, but they get stuck with it. Everybody assumes what they see in your ascendant. They assume by seeing that until they get to know you as your sun purpose and your moon, your emotions, and the you, the interactive you. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. So, uh, I would say then that the ascendant is uh, connected to the body you're in, the now. It's you're in this body. Here you are. There you go. Yeah. Right. And 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 uh, um, the sun is moving to the future, moving forward. The moon is reflecting on the past, back. Yep. An emotional reaction. Oh, I got this thrown at me. I'm reacting this way. Even when my Leo moon is, I react. I tend to, everybody thinks I'm more stronger in my reactions than when I do my Capricorn expression because it's masculine. We get confused with this masculine feminine thing. Is that that's another way to guess these signs just are they expansive or are they pulling back? Are they expansive? Or, uh, Virgo is pulling back. They're pulling into the stomach. They're pulling in and their minds are thinking and their hands are very close to the body. Gemini was out here. Uh, Virgo is close to the body. And I like to say their hands are protecting their virginal parts. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, and, uh, but you could see that the chest, <clears throat> sucking chest, thin upper section, the curve, the stomach is the part they rule. So they, when they walk, waddle, walk in the room, there's kind of a, a, a I almost, no, I don't like the word waddle. They walk in very precisely, step by step. And then the stomach moves back and forth at one step with the other as they walk in. And these hands hover very close to the body. Gemini, they hover as they sit out there. And they, this is one of my favorite drawings of uh, all of the signs is by Virgo caricature there's this look of knowing in their eyes like they got everything figured out and there's the little two 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 dots in their eyes not one you know you're getting a you don't just have a dot you got it looks like it's an electrical thing going back and forth in both of the eyes does that make sense yes Yet and, Mercury, the, the hermaphrodite, with all the mutable signs, you must be able to see the hermaphrodite. There's two fish, there's two twins, there's uh, two natures in Sagittarius, horse and the man, and then Virgo is also the hermaphrodite, the man and the woman. Yeah. Yeah. So you see the what, Yeah. The, I, I like, I often pick them by the gap in their front teeth. Yes, and yeah, they have a long yeah. nose. Yeah, and I look at here, he had uh, Stephen King, Virgo, uh, Virgo, Gap. Well, nowadays with modern dentistry, uh, it's hard to tell. Uh, actually, Sean Connery had one. Of course, everybody from Britain had a gap in their front teeth. Madonna, she, she's a, she has a gap in the front teeth. She's a Virgo. Virgo oh. rising, yes. Yeah. yes. Particularly and, um, rising because it's a bone. You should, have got, uh, you should have got a picture of Oliver Stone. My goodness, he's got the largest gap. Oh, is that there him? There he is. There, there he is. is. Oh, yeah, yeah, there he is. <laughs> you can pick him. Being Virgo, well, I mean, you can see all the contorted facial features, that rustic-looking, earthy energy yeah. there. But you can just pick him as a Virgo just by that gap. Yeah, yeah. Is Remember? this because of Mercury? Yeah. Yep, Mercury. Yeah, yeah, making twins. 
Yeah, it's because one side of the face is going this way and the other going that, and it creates the gap. Uh, remember early days with, um, who was the English star, the rock star that had a big gap? Then, oh. of course, uh, Madonna. She yeah, had a uh, gap. I just said it before, yeah. Madonna. Yeah, well, have a look at their. Uh, uh, bald heads all virgos uh, my uh, nephew he took he went bald at 18 um and they've all got these l very very high foreheads look look at oliver stones it goes way way up we don't see that much with cameron diaz um <laughs> yeah but is it because the mercury also the the long that's good that's because she's a cancer ascendant. See, it's rounder. Mm. And the that? one to her right, the one to yes. her right, she's got the uh, the squinted offset eyes of the Virgo. Mm -hmm. uh, she has a, uh, Aquarius ascendant and Capricorn moon. So, but I see the Aquarius. There's a lightness to her, an airiness. Yep. For a earth sign. She's light. She's mm -hmm. at L Aquarius. But you sure see the cancer with Cameron Diaz. Yep. And, I and uh, Dr. Phil. Uh, he's a Pisces rising sign Taurus moon. But he sure is a Virgo. Look at that. And they got the long dipping nose that dips dips down and usually splits almost we get a split in gemini we get a split in in uh in the virgo uh, and the offset cheekbones mm -hmm. and they're and the cheekbones are narrow and not wide like we see in the others, not solid. They they kind of run at different angles, and they're very thin. Everything about Virgo is very thin. Most of them never have to worry about being overweight. Oh, yes, yes. Even, though they, even though they love to eat. Oh, they love it. Yeah. And my favorite Virgo was Lily Tomlin. Is this who, who am I am speaking? <laughs> yeah, they're very. Uh, I find that uh, the Gaons are very eccentric and uh, look like wizards and witches, you know, don't they? They've all got that sort of uh, hermetic, uh, um, you could say, uh, witty, kinky, slightly cheeky. Uh, yeah. Thing about Fussy. Them. And definitely fussy. They'll fuss over the darndest littlest details. But that's what they're great at. I, gosh, I tell you, I'm horrible at it. I have no Virgo in my chart, and my house is, a, 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 well, shall we say it, constantly needs work that never gets done. <laughs> uh, all right, where are I? Okay, let's go uh, next one. Let's take a look at, there's our Virgos again. I'll see what happens when we get a, Virgo ascendant, Woody Allen. There you see the Sagittarius. He also chatterbox. He he, fuss he whine over the smallest of details. He was. I just I used to love his earlier shows, his movies. Uh, I love that look at Conan and Brian and Aries with a Virgo rising, and and when he started his show. On, when he had the late show, he always would pull at his tie and he he fidgeted so much they had to get, get back and put him under control. So he finally got his Virgo ascended under control. But he's very fidgety. He's not really straight at you in your face. He would fidget. This was his persona. He was very nervous. It, is that, I don't know. And there's Madonna in the gap in her teeth. She's a Leo with Virgo. I, I had it backwards. That's I had it backwards. That's why I. But remember, Madonna, the gap in her teeth. It has been corrected. Uh, 
Katie Lang, oh, does she look like a Scorpio? But look, look, look at look at that features. Uh, you also that Scorpio is looking like a Virgo. It's just one eye is above. There's no the fixity is a little kitty wampus, kitty wampus, little twisted up, lifted up on one side. And here we get double Virgo with Dana Carvey, Gemini, the church lady. Now, 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 you people. And very airy, breathy voice, like I mentioned with Marilyn Monroe. And, of course, Mary Poppins, Julie Andrews, perfect, in the kitchen, taking care of everything. Nice easy going lever never offended anybody but boy she had a virgo rising what were you going to say santos i interrupted you no no the virgo rising people i find that they um highly accessorize they've always got uh, necklace and earrings and makeup they're very very conscious and they've got a very unusual kind of dress sense it's not really i don't know not down the center. It's never, you know, um, uh, in the middle. It's kind of out there sometimes. Yeah, well, I think it depends on, of course, yeah, with definitely with the sun signs. It's, it's uh, precise, very precise and proper. And also uh, intelligent and, and slim, the body. <clears throat> Ascendant Virgo is mm -hmm. not, not very... Fat. Well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. On, now we're going to from mutability. We're going into for everybody out there. We're going into a, a new season, the season of fall on the equator. Perfect balance, which takes us to the cardinal sign of Libra. Notice how the energy runs sideways. Aries ran this way. We're talking direction. Aries runs this way, right at you, actually forward. Libra spreads it to the side. They're always balancing. Mm -hmm. They're perfect balance. They're like a, a model. You know, they're on stage modeling, like they have a book on their head. Perfect balance. Perfect grace balance. Um, uh, Okay, Jimmy Carter, double Libra. I believe he's a Libra rising sign Libra. He's got it. That's it. Gwyneth Paltrow. Uh, where where was she? She's a Pisces rising sign, Gemini moon. So we get a little, the air is a little stronger. I don't know. Uh, Pisces rising, she's, she sells a bunch of goop or something, beauty things, very Libra stuff, they always into beauty products. Uh, I forget who this is. This is um, Kelly Ripa, she was a talk show host. You can see the Libra, the smile, the perfect horizontal spread. Michael Douglas, um, Scorpio rising Capricorn, so he's a little heavier than this double air here. So uh, Scorpio rising, there we're getting that beak. We don't have the dainty rounded beak, it's strong and distinct. And the eyebrows are a little more thick, Scorpio rising. Matt Damon, of course, is... Um, I believe he's a, I can't remember. I didn't write it down. I changed the picture. So I I had originally Jenny Anderson. Is a, well, anyway, I don't know what Matt Damon is. I, oh, I can check in my handy dandy book. Any comments on your side? 
Yeah, well, um, I see the um, the big vertical dimples. You can see them. Um, you can yeah. see the big V shaped smile from ear to ear. You can see the horizontal eyebrows. Yeah. Very much like ascendant Spain. Aquarius. Yeah. And Sag uh, Sagittarius uh, Moon. Right. Uh, Matt Damon Aquarius Rising. Yeah. And a Capricorn yes. Moon. Capricorn. Capricorn. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And the eyes of Matt Damon is, is typical for uh, Libra, which is uh, one eye is straight and the second eye is going on side. And there's a certain diamond-like sparkle in their eyes. It isn't uh, as, as electric as as with the Gemini. Yes, the air sign typical and, for air. And Aquarius, it's, 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 it's like a diamond. It's just elegantly pleasing mm -hmm. you get this you see yeah, the little uh, libra symbol that i snuck in there <laughs> well sort of uh, and, and these as santos said this this wide cheek line that creates the v-shaped v-shaped mm -hmm. chin perfect in a, and then it's perfectly balanced by the second fold. But that V shape you see on Jimmy Carter, and it's here with Kelly Ripa. Damon has it. Um, but I like his Aquarius rising. He's he's light, but he can mm -hmm. Capricorn moon. And of course, perfect balance. And they kind of just walk into the room like a model. Okay, so we got, we looked at them. Let's, Libra Ascendants. Sagittarius, a little longer face, not as perfectly balanced. No, and then, you know, spread this way. It seems spread this way. Sag goes this way. Ed Aries. And Britney Spears is a Sagittarius with Libra rising. She does have that Venusian eyes. They're soft. They're almost kind of hint of Taurus. They're a little more sparkly. That's what I... It's, it's like it's a calmness to it like you see with Taurus, Venus. Here we have a Gemini, and a Libra. She's, uh, Paula Abdul is a very uh, mercuric, airy person. She vibrates like air. I just, I just like that look. It's a combination of Libra and Gemini. It's very airy, uh, non-settled. Mm -hmm. There's a Jenny Anderson Aquarius with Libra ascendant. That's why I didn't have her last time. I'm sorry. Yeah. So uh, and look at that look. The same as we had with Bat Matt Damon over here. There's he's an Aquarius ascendant Libra sun. She's an Aquarius with Libra. See the similarity? We're flip flopping. He's a Libra with Aquarius rising. She's an Aquarius with mm -hmm. Libra rising. So there's a sim. Sounds sim right. Yeah. And, wow. And, and the widespread eyes. And the big smile, of course. She has a, and there's something interesting. They both got longer chins than usual. Well, and then, uh, Scorpio, Leo DiCaprio, Scorpio intensity, but always that charming presence. He was on some kid show as a kid. He was a charming little neighbor guy, and he and he became a finally got his uh, Oscar a couple of years ago. But he plays <laughs> Scorpio roles, but he looks very pleasant, doesn't he? Yeah, he's mm -hmm. got that Scorpio beak. You can see the eyebrows, the, the eagle look, the hawk. Looks like a hawk. Um, but they've all got beautiful chins. 
the labor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot like that look we had with Salman Rusty. Remember you were talking about that? And yep. remember that look? I think you might be right on that uh, stuff in the eighth house, a big heavy eighth house or a Scorpio presence. And he was a Gemini with a Taurus. No, yeah. I can't. Yeah, Taurus rising. But he so, had the. Can you show the wide upper eyelids that stretch out to the sides? The what? The wide upper eyelids. So, oh, yeah, these right here. This goes way out and this goes way out. It's, and, and it's very puffy like a cloud. They're not thin. Well, uh, I mean, more so here. But you look at, look at that wide lid that just seems to wrap to the, off to the side and, and it bulges like a cloud, cumulus cloud. It's everything's cumulus cloud. It's light. Uh, even here, well, he's a little, he doesn't have the Libra eyes, but here. And then, oh, again, yeah. his eyes are very close together. Where is? For a Libra. Uh, he was a uh, Scorpio rising sign, so it pulls him in. And and hers are out there. And yep. same with Matt Damon. Same with Bon Jovi. His eyes are very wide apart and very not very round and full like you expect with a Pisces. They're slit, slit eyes. They have slit eyes like little six. And uh, Cancer here. He's very Harrison Ford has always had a charming presence indiana jones he was calm and serene that venusian presence that he presented was all libra every never never a worry no problem <laughs> and then amazing how this works all right okay problem. yeah we're at scorpio and i thought before we uh uh, start with it, we kind of reveal what has happened in the fall season. We went from summer up here, and we went through a Cancer, Leo, and Virgo. Mm -hmm. And then at the first day of the fall, when the sun drops down in the darkness at the, hits the equator, it begins the uh, journey to the south of the equator into the winter. And that's the reverse for all the people in the other hemisphere. But then we went through Libra, and today we're in the middle of autumn, and that's Scorpio. And, you know, in the middle of autumn, it's cold, the wintry nights, the snow, the uh, water is turning to ice. It's solid form in this fixed water. Nature's elements are transformed, and they hold on to all resources of worth so we can survive the winter months ahead. Who knows the secrets? And what happens? The Scorpio knows. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Scorpio knows. Remember that? Yes. The, the color of his hair you make because the Mars influence, isn't it? Yeah. And I made the uh, picture from the other ones a little bigger so we could look at the face a little more. The most important thing with uh, Scorpio are these intense eyes. You know, and and, and I looked at those eyes and they look like they pull in from the outside. Just, they're not round pupils. They pull in from the outside. And this is really, uh, makes them seem right focused, right at you. And they're yeah. locked in under the eyebrows. We talked about the fixed eyebrows of uh, Taurus and Leo earlier. And, uh, but here we have a, a different color. It isn't as, uh, red is Leo, it's purple. So you got a little bit of that water in there. And those fixed brows, they come down, they pull the eyes. What's interesting with the Scorpio face is the nose is totally different. Uh, Taurus and Leo have short noses and they're rather stubby and the nostrils are up here. But Scorpio, 
The nose pulls down, the tip pulls below the nostrils, quite a distance. Like a cold. Yeah, that's because of the uh, bend in the nose and the eagle's beak. Eagles, yes. E eagle's beak, yeah. And you see how uh, the face is longer than we saw in Taurus and Leo because uh, it's very much like uh, Aries. Uh, Scorpio is also ruled by Mars, so they have this very long face and the dominant nose we won't use the term beak this time but aries has a long nose like that and this pulls this part of the face right there if you can see that section there it pulls it down and uh, makes that a lot larger in this smaller portion here so the upper lip is really tight and 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 uh, not a big upper lip it's tightly drawn upper lip and the jaw is very pushed up in this section is uh, smaller than the rest of the face. You kind of follow that? You have any questions on that? Yes, uh, Scorpio also have some, something to do with skin. The skin uh, is, is more thin. Than uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, the flesh is around. It's, mm -hmm. it's fluid, it's, it's, it's liquid, but held in place with the fixed water. And uh, and um, that gives it an interesting texture. It's uh, I don't uh, uh, Pisces is very transparent. Uh -huh. Cancer is middle water. It's middle tone. This is deeper. It looks like we're in a deeper space of water. But that's a hard way to explain water, but it's it's because it's so deep and, and pulls down deep to the depths. Yeah. You get a different feel to that thing. And also also the eyes are like hypnotized, hypnotizing eyes the Scorpio has and uh, very cold. It sometimes looks very cold. Yeah, yeah. And it, and of course it's that time of year and that's why i wanted to bring the winter in or the season elements in because every one of these signs symbolizes that point in that season whether it's the cardinal point mm -hmm. our cancer crabs were scooting with the tides and then we lock the tides in the hold mm -hmm. and then uh and then in Next, when we get to Pisces, they break loose again to bring us into spring. So you could feel that water and how it changes in every season that there's water. So uh, it starts Cancer and it's in the middle of uh, fall and the end of spring. So that's an interesting thought, you know, that uh, mm -hmm. you think of the energy of the season and that's exactly what these faces represent. Did that make any sense? <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. So, Scorpio, so we have from the 12 uh, zodiac signs, we have only two rules by Mars. So, uh, Bill, what is the similarity between uh, Aries and Scorpio? What, what has own uh, similar, uh, similar uh, looks or in your the opinion? The difference between who and who? Yes. How, how, how you look? What is the differences? I know the eyes and also the eyebrow is a bit higher, is going up uh, in Scorpio. Yeah. Line. Well, the uh, and the uh, Pisces Cancer is very round. It's very evenly. You got the big center in Cancer. Pisces is immutable, of course, it's twisted. One current's going this way and the other's going that way. Oh, that's it. And uh, to me, what you're seeing is, is uh, the patterns of the cardinal fixed mutable. The water is, you know, you can think about the seasons and it's more transparent in the spring because the light's coming through because it's rising up through Pisces. Mm -hmm. It's going down with Scorpio, and it's kind of right there at full shine in Cancer. Maybe that's the difference in the water. If you were looking up through the water and you saw the reflection of the sun looking up from the bottom of the ocean, that's kind of the feeling with Cancer. But here you're looking from the top down 
into the uh, depths below. Does that make sense? That's a thought. You inspired me there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You want to... Anyway, the cheekbones is really the key part. The uh, cheekbones are wide and flat. And it yes. really makes, that's the key difference. You don't see those cheekbones in cancer. You see just big around circle. In Pisces, they, one side comes down and the other goes up. You'll see a Mobius pattern. Uh, I think also regard, uh, compared to Pisces, the Pisces has beautiful teeth and Scorpio has different, different, uh, it's different teeth. Yeah, that's an interesting thought. Uh, Sometimes I, they have a break uh, between the top, top teeth. Hmm? Say it again? Sometimes Scorpio has a problem with teeth. And also have a problem with the. Sometimes they have a bre breaks uh, the same like Virgo in the top teeth. Yeah, yeah. I never seen a gap in the Scorpio. It's very solid and solid tooth here. Those teeth aren't. They're really strong front teeth with a Scorpio. They don't have a gap. Uh, I and uh, Cancer are small teeth. A little. Uh, Mm -hmm. But they strike me as very large on a on a Scorpio. That's my just an observation on the moment. But I believe that's what I drew there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you want you want to go look at the profile now? And some other people? Or you got any other questions? Yeah. On the face? Yes. yes, yes. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> The key thing is body language. If you want to capture, watch someone for a while and watch the way they move around the room, particularly when they're going up to make a point and they're projecting their sun signs, if they have this as ascendant, they're going to look like this bone structure wise with the ascendant. And we'll talk about some Scorpio ascendants in a minute, but you, you can see where the body part ruled by uh, Scorpio is the pelvis. So it leads the way forward. So as that leads the way, the feet go to the back. The back sways way to the back. You see the direction here. And then it takes a sharp angle forward. And if you follow this line from here to here, it's almost a straight line. And so the top of the head is narrower in width than the bottom and eliminate the jaw and you can kind of see that i suppose i could exaggerate it a little more but that is a really good way to see some scorpio particularly a sentence because that's the bone structure so and then you'll see the beak and how that turns down excuse me the fine nose and the fixed eyebrows the forehead the strong forehead that sweeps back Mm -hmm. and the solid chin and then another interesting thing is the taurus ears They're, they they kind of run to the back and they point upward to the back you can kind of see it here on this uh, these are all scorpio sun signs mm -hmm. there you see it with the mcconaughey really distinct with them um, with uh, leo dicaprio ladies don't have theirs showing but the the pointed ears and they represent if you think of an eagle they have feathers on the side of their face and they sweep up to the back to a point mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like here you can see it right there uh, but it's uh sweeps back to to the back so that's kind of the way it looks any questions on body language or anything? Is it also similar to Eris, the body language? All languages have a different body language thanks to the rulership because where that rulership, I think the way the ancients discovered the rulership, this is my interpretation, is that they watched people and if there was a big conglomeration in Mars, they would find that this part of the body would either get ill or get uh, activated. The same with Aries with the head, which goes straight forward with the head. But those parts of the body with Mars, so they said, well, uh, Scorpio rules here. And of course, that fits deep, dark secrets. 
And on the other hand, Aries is the pioneer charging forth. So the body language, they have realized, and it follows the circle. They're, they're planted in the circle. Mm -hmm. Aries is the head, Taurus, and so forth. So the next sign we go to will be Sag, and that will be the thighs, and that will be bouncing forward like a horse galloping down the path. You kind of came to see that in all the signs. So the body language is really interesting. On my website, Astral Visions, mm -hmm. with the da uh, Astral Visions at YouTube, rather, you could uh, catch the walk through the zodiac. It's kind of you, a goofy little video I made several years ago, and I demonstrate how each of the signs walk. So, and anyway, we start. Any other questions on that? No, it's okay. It's it's probably influence of the ascendant and. Uh other other planets say that uh, because it's very difficult sometimes to recognize uh, Scorpio only the, the most characteristic is the eyes in my think and nose yeah cheek, cheekbones maybe or eyebrows mm. okay here on the right are some Scorpio sun signs you notice they all have varying Except for the one on Matthew, will explain that what how the other parts of the elements make a difference. Mm -hmm. And uh, Scorpio, the strongest fixed Scorpio look here is Whoopi Goldberg. She has a fixed sun sign and a fixed moon. So uh, uh, her uh, Aquarius rising and a Scorpio moon. So fixity. She really looks fixed. Uh, over here is Emma Stone. She is Leo rising, and her moon is Libra. By the way, all of these have air in their charts. We'll talk about that. She has Aquarius. She has Libra, mm -hmm. and uh, the airs, and and so she appears rather pleasant and less threatening because that Libra is a very calming presence. But who would believe that? Uh, DiCaprio has Libra rising and a Libra moon. You can see it in the structure of his face, but look at those eyes. You still have the intense eyes. And he, he's, he's always played rather mobster roles and really tough guys. Yeah. And uh, but so that's the Scorpio. And I, it's just hard to be. Uh, he's not a perfect example of a double Libra. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's that look to it. It does. It, it's different than Scorpio. You don't have the broad, solid nose. That sort of look. You, there's a balance to the face with the Libra rising. You can kind of see that very balanced appearance. And then Matthew McConaughey is a um, he's a, a Gemini rising with the Virgo moon. Now those are both mutable. So as we talked earlier. The mutable sends one side of the face up, the other down. You can see where his nose runs this this way. It curves this way. The chin curves that way. One eye goes that way. And that's his mutable. But he still has those pointed ears, the high fixed forehead, square, and the solid chin. And that beak uh -huh. is uh, quite very strong for Geminis. Rather have, shall we say, dainty noses. So you can see where the uh, other sparks are coming in. Any questions on these people here? No, it's, it's okay. Okay, so we're, we're going to go and look at, we, we saw them there, and we're going to look at some Scorpio Ascendant. So we're doing the reverse of what we had here. We got... Uh, Scorpio Ascendants, these are all Scorpio Ascendants, Gemini, Clint Eastwood, Virgo, Oliver Stone. Uh, you would never guess Clint Eastwood is a uh, Gemini rising. If you saw his movie Any Which Way But Loose, which even the title suggests Gemini, and it was one of his comedies, and it was pretty whimsical, a lot of kinetic energy, erratic energy, I should say, and fun. But most of his movies are Dirty Harry, the spaghetti westerns, that sort of thing. Uh, Oliver Stone is a more uh, analytical. Mm -hmm. You can see the Virgo thought in his face. And uh, he's a, does a, he writes most of his own scripts for his movies that he directs. 
but you can still see structurally he strolls shows the strong bone structure of that mm -hmm. chin the solid brow the forehead the large nose yeah. of scorpio so, a lot of, lot of fi films of oliver stones are connected to secrets like scorpio scorpio likes all the secrets of the world yeah and he uh, yeah you're right he does want to reveal all the nasty secrets of the politics mm -hmm. and that's a good point there yeah in in the middle we have a uh, uh penny marshall is a libra and martha stewart is a leo they're both masculine sun signs but they have scorpio ascendants mm -hmm. so uh, this leo out here she loves to put on a show she's always telling us how to I think she has a Virgo moon. I gotta check on that's just off the top. Of I got so many of them in my head, but I think she has a Virgo moon because she's fastidious in the kitchen. But she certainly is a Leo in her pre her Leo shine of self. Mm -hmm. But but she she's always been very private, and has this again. We see the square features, but again we're getting a, a hint. Of Scorpio and Leo, they're both fixed. So there's more squareness than there is with the gem. Look how his face is. Does it come out square because of that Gemini sun? And Libra, Penny Marshall, comedian lady, comedian lady, and uh, you can see the Scorpio. She's always was a kind of mysterious. Wouldn't say much, but it was always uh, very one to help others in her comedy shows. It's Laverne and Shirley. I don't know if you've seen any of these American TV shows from back when we were used to watch television. And the bottom two are both water signs. They, see how rounder and softer they look and these others look a little more erratic? Yeah. More dry. They, the, the water is just right there, just kind of like you're looking at a puddle of water. Mm -hmm. Pisces, Jennifer Love here had to shorten her name to make it fit. She's a Pisces, and the waters slot, move up and down, and she does this mutable water thing. Very kind. You don't feel threatened, but, but you sure see a certain intensity in her eyes. And that nose is a wee bit long for a Pisces. So that's probably due to the Scorpio ascendant. And last but not least, we have uh, the uh, cancer of Chris Christopherson. He's a cancer sun sign. You can see it in the round face right there, the soft cancer. But he's always had an intensity to him, a, a discomfort. This cancer was never comfortable, like most of them. Excuse me, like most of them. And uh, so, so he's so, got the Scorpio ascendant. That's Chris yeah. Christopher. So, because his eyes is very small. See? So it's another yeah. typical for Scorpio uh, element, what shows his eyes are very often uh, very small. Yeah, and cancer could be pulling them in, uh, mm -hmm. whereas the, the, she has very large eyes. Oh, yes, yes. In fact, most of these uh, come to think that their eyes aren't as big as you see in the original. Here's a double Scorpio, so we got large eyes, but I'd say most of these are rather small eyes. So maybe Scorpio pulls the eye, makes smaller eyes, but... But again, I, 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 that's a good observation. You to, I have to go redraw everything now. <laughs> Another 20, 20 <laughs> of work. Anyway, so I, that's it for uh, Scorpio, I guess. From here on, we're going to go to the next sign of uh, Sagittarius, and we'll do that. First of all, let's go back to you. Do you have any questions? No, I we just uh, I've got a question about uh, about uh, how would you Bill, how would you describe me uh, if you don't remember my signs? Maybe you remember, but 
how would you describe me the, what I am the mix of different different size if you if you look at me uh, oh. if you could say a few few sentences about uh, I forgot what you were but I think you said you were Aquarius is that correct <laughs> fixed it, I see a lot of fixed you look like a Scorpio rising you got the, the distinct uh, brows or maybe are you a double a fixed sign rising too uh, we'll go. We'll go rising. Oh, Taurus B can between Leo and Virgo exactly, but <clears throat> oh. Virgo rising, zodiac Aquarius and Taurus Moon. Oh, that's okay. Now, is your Virgo rising in the Taurus B camp? Were you born after the uh, second to or the uh, second to the eleventh? And a following Virgo would be Taurus, correct? The next decant would you say in the circle takes you up to Taurus. Mm -hmm. So that are you in that? When's your birthday? Twenty second of January. Second, or you're you're the first day of the Taurus decant. Very strong Taurus features with a Taurus moon and a fixed uh, sun sign. So I, I I'm getting aware it. The V can't throw you off a lot too. So if you oh. think people are having trouble with it, thinking about just the twelve signs, you're going to have three versions of each. Uh, each, uh, I don't have the birth dates on any of these here, but uh, uh, I'm not going to make a guess because then I'll be wrong. But uh, you can see, I would just guess. I'd look at his face. Mm -hmm. Are you still seeing this image here? Yes. Uh, Oliver Stone, he looks a lot like you. He's a Virgo, but you're, maybe he has a Virgo. He's in the Taurus decant of Virgo, and you're mm -hmm. in the Taurus decant of, of uh, Virgo rising. So what it does is it's, after you're, you're going through the circle, you go, the earth signs are Taurus, Leo, or Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. The first 10 degrees is the sun sign, Virgo. Mm -hmm. The second would be the next earth sign in that comes up after Virgo is Capricorn. And the next one after that is uh, Taurus. See, Taurus is the one before where well, you can't go before you're in the next sign because zero to ten is Virgo and so forth and that also works on a Senate I don't see much on the uh, moon sign it's too hard to guess the emotions and and all the other factors in the chart really affect the moon sign whereas Sun and a Senate are pretty solid it's the real thing as far as I'm concerned mm -hmm. so I think that fits on you and uh, yeah. Thank you. You, Thank you. you look a lot like uh, Oliver Stone. So <laughs> look at your picture. A great director, a great motion picture producer. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. Well, be. well, anyway, I guess that will wrap it up. And well, I'm, so, as I said, um, I guess we'll go somewhere here and go to any other things. Cut out the stuff I don't need to say, like right now. But uh, mm -hmm. um, any other things? That's a good comment on that. Uh, guess your point, and really the fact that you fit this discussion so well, because you really look like our uh, Scorpio. You because really have a long forehead. My my it's, mother, my mother is Scorpio, but. You know, the North Node is in Scorpio sign. My North Node uh, in Vedic Astrology Rahu is in Scorpio sign. Oh. Well, and then there's those 6,000 billion asteroids that we got to count. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. The most important is the Ascendant, Zodiac, Moon, because Moon sometimes shows how the people think, but the... Uh, but this is also also important. But this kind of knowledge is very useful yeah, because uh, you can recognize compatibility of, for example, if some 
boys looking for the girls and the compatibility is not so easy to find so yeah and and and, and it brings us back down to the the real final point of uh, growing and understanding yourself is realize that all 12 of these in ideas, all of these feelings, these spiritual thoughts, the thoughts and the physical senses, they're in all of us and, and some of them could be strong and overwhelming is the point is to use all of them so that you can keep healthy. I think that's the way to do it. Yes. On, uh -huh. on, on to the Sagittarius. <laughs> One of my favorite signs. I love this. They stick their tongues out a lot. That's Miley Cyrus and uh, Taylor Swift, Jeff Bridges, Virgo Rising. Uh, uh, what's Tyra Banks, Cancer Ascendant. I don't see that too much. I like the Sag look there. They're always look like they're always just Smiling. wow, wow look. <laughs> wow. Hey, excited, wow. excited. I like this. Ben Stiller is a, uh, there's a Sag rising. He's a um, Gemini Ascendant Pisces. No, Gemini Ascendant and Pisces Moon. He's a triple Virgo. Sure, show or triple mutable. I'm sorry. And uh, Brad Pitt again, Sag ascendant, mm -hmm. or he's a Sag ascendant. Oh, I'm confused. I think I messed up there. Brad Pitt. I'm getting him confused with DiCaprio. And he's a Sag. So they bounce into the room feet first, skipping in. A one one foot sends them in the other, the other one sends them in the other, the other one sends a dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum as they come in the room. And mm -hmm. the the whole bottom half of the uh that we're now past the midpoint of Libra, we're now all from now on all of the energies in the lower half of the feet. Lower half of the body, I'm sorry. And uh so you see this in the body language. Usually large thighs, quite a big uh, here. Yep. And then Sagittarius rules the hips, and hips comes from hippo, the horse in Greek. Yeah. And they're rather surprisingly thin in the upper half. Most of them have got very small, and it thins and thins and thins. They get a long, thin. And my most fascinating thing is how the head comes back like a dome like that. It goes way to the back. Oh, wait. And they're fairly decent, and then it drops down to the um, horse nose, almost as big here as it is, and the horse jaw. Here's the horse jaw. I know, it. there's the horse jaw. <laughs> But, mm -hmm. it, but it's, uh, it's a it's not a wide job, but it it it's large. It's uh, maybe I didn't catch it quite right here. I got too much up here. This should be a little thinner. And then these eyes that sparkle with fire, and they constantly the sparks, and uh, and the uh, one brow above the other. One eye above the other, the wide, bulbous nose. There's a big round bulb on the tip of the nose. Most cases, well, everybody has surgery and gets it corrected. If you're a movie star, oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Virgo rising here. He does. He doesn't have the large. We'll see it in a couple of the other pictures. I think. But the ascendants particularly. And this strange little folds on the side, like you can see on a horse where the side of their it mocks the horse, makes the jaw more seem like it's coming forward more. 
and it is coming for, forward, I should probably bring that out a little more because they tend to come out a little more. Aries comes back, the uh, horse's jaw comes out. But uh, anyway, let's let's take a look at some uh, Sagittarius's with the Senate. Goldie Hahn, you never guessed she was a Scorpio. My favorite story was when I first started this, that is what I saw with Goldie Hahn. And, 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 and I looked her up and said, no, wow, she ain't no Scorpio. She's a sad ascendant. She's a giddy, giddy laugher, giddily, was always laughing, like hee-hawing like a horse, hee-hawing, whatever it is, what a horse does, whinnying, that's it. And, and I said, astrology is BS, it don't work, that proves it right there. And when I found out she was a Sag rising, and I kind of figured out what Sag looks like, uh, I said, oh my gosh, astrology works. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Um, well, I don't have her. Sag, I forget her moon. I think she has a Scorpio. I can't remember her moon. I wonder what I. Miley Cyrus is a Taurus rising. You wouldn't believe that, would you? But it, she's the old country girl. But she just, she really, her new persona was to uh, do. Sagittarius stuff. Okay. Uh, Aquarius, Paris Hilton. Yeah, that fits. There's Aquarius. Aquarius kind of a square features structure and a little bit of a uh, longer face of Sagittarius ascendant. Capricorn. There. Oh, there's a combination of Capricorn and a Sagittarius. Doesn't that just fit my drawing? I always thought he was a Sag, as Nicholas Cage. Look at that, just, you know, amazing. And Pisces, and Chuck Norris, the athletic Chuck Norris, Pisces, Sag rising. Sagittarius, and this is, uh, you know, he's the one that did all the adventure movies, running around the world to all the exotic adventures. And uh, he's a Capricorn. And speaking of Capricorn, I guess we can go to the best sign in the zodiac. The best one, <laughs> because it's you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, well, that's my Leo Moon humming there. <laughs> so we go from a fixed to cardinal. And you remember what I'm talking about, Capricorn looking up? Yes. It looks like we got the the earthy, sunken, the cheekbones are very wide and sunken in the middle. That's why they appear so serious. Even wide cheekbones. Or she's a little happier person. But look at um, uh, Jed, Jed, Jed Law or not. Um, Jed Law, yeah. And, and, and Betty White, look at that. It's the sunken cheeks. Mary Tyler Moore, much nice Libra there, but look at those cheekbones. She was always so, and of course, Muhammad Ali. So we get this very serious look. Mm -hmm. And they're, as they move up the mountain, they're always looking up, up, up here, over here, way over here, looking up at the top of the path ahead, climbing that mountain. And they usually have pretty short extremities, and and they sink. The knees carry them forward, so it drops the butt down a little bit, and then they walk cautiously forward, step at a time, step at a time. 
So, uh, okay, so there's our Capricorn, serious people, even when mm -hmm. we were very lovely. And I just love Betty White. What is she, 115 years old? And she's still in, starring in roles. They, she's a wonderful representation of the endurance of Capricorn. Uh, Capricorn has said it, Michael Gemini, Michael Fox. Look at that. Look at those cheekbones. Scorpio, Charlie Branson, look at that. Same look, those just makes him look so serious. He doesn't have the intense eyes. He's got those little beady Capricorn eyes, beady Capricorn eyes. I hate to say that myself. I don't have beady Capricorn eyes. Maybe I do. Uh, Jane Fonda, Sagittarius. She's a Sag, but she's got Capricorn. Look at those cheekbones, wide sunken cheekbones. Oh, there's a Capricorn look for a Leo. Dustin Hoffman. Look at that. Ratzel Rizzle for the movie Midnight Cowboy. What 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 a what a goat image he cast out with his Capricorn ascendant in that role his breakthrough role. So everybody gets cast to their ascendant. Mm. Uh, Virgo, uh, Sophia Lauren, she's, uh, she's still lovely and she's, uh, uh, she's as old as uh, Betty White, I believe. I just saw a picture the other day and I said, my goodness, amazing. And um, I think she's still alive. Anyway, Libra, uh, Susan Sarandon, uh, again, look at the bone structures, very wide cheekbones. You can see it, can't you? Yep, you sure um, can. And there, there's kind of a downturned beak. It, it's quite prominent, not so with her. And I, he's a Leo, Aquarius rising, Leo moon, or one or the other. I think he's a Leo rising and an Aquarius moon. Uh, I'm the greatest. Yeah, he's a Leo rising, just like a president we got now. I'm the greatest. <laughs> yes. Um, and, 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 and then I sting like a butterfly. Well, that was his re emotional reaction. That was Aquarius. And uh, then all of these people are their mask. Their their mask is very important. Uh -huh. So you see where sun and ascendant. That's the key. You know the reflection on the moon is you gotta catch him in a moment. It's not physically obvious like it is with the ascendant and the sun because that's the real earth point of the sunlight. You know you see what I'm saying? Yes. Maybe you. Okay, uh, Aquarius, the greatest sign the zodiac, right, Greg? Yes, yes, the greatest. I am the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's <laughs> great. <laughs> uh, this this is a fun one for me. I've always got a kick out of it. Uh, these body drawings, I'm going to have to redo. Those were some of the earlier stuff. They miss a lot of the points. But what is neat about Talk about locking in to the inner mind and the third eye right there. Oh, I got an idea. Bingo. I've got an idea every day. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the, uh, the split lines and the little weird, almost, it looks like the Aquarius symbol there. Not quite, but. Will, what is the why is Aquarius has blue eyes? Very common that the, this color of the blue eyes is very energetic. Like it's different. It's different. It's more yeah, it, bright. It's it's uh it's it's on the other side of the dimension of somewhere. It's uh it's not sunlight. You know, this is uh, winter. Mm -hmm. It's like uh. The hidden inner light, I guess. The inner light, that's what mm -hmm. it is. It's, it's not in the outward like Leo. It's in, it's 
pulling you in. Those eyes pull you in. Mm-hmm. And they lock onto you. And, and real short brows. And uh, this kind of double line here. There's this little gap between your nose, between your two brows. Mm-hmm. I say that again, Bill. You are. Um, breaking kiss. Right, There's a again. little dip between the two brows where the bridge comes down on the top of the. Uh-huh. You can kind of see it here. There's one right there that's really hard to see. Uh, and, uh, these pictures are so small here. I, if I had a sharper images, but that's what I had. But anyway, that's interesting. And then, of course, the brows pull in. They don't go out like Leo. Mm-hmm. They're pulling in. Everything's pulling in. Everything is pulling in. This, the face, it's like the face, the facial elements, the brows, the eyes, the nose, the mouth are way smaller than the big head. Does that make sense? Yes. Because yep. this is all squeezed in. It's like we got a really big head with all them ideas stuck in there. That would be because of satin, satin. And, uh, and, uh, and it's all pulled in, and then the cheekbones are pulled in. And even they pull, everything's pulling in, fixed. And then the, the uh, yeah, that's, and the, uh, and they really tight down, drop when they smile, the, the yes, light. It pulls straight down on the sides, that really tight smile. Look at that with him. Uh, and here, the rest of them didn't catch the right moment. You can see where he's, but the, mm-hmm. Alan Alden really shows it. And he shows that basic small face in the big head. Mm-hmm. It's all, other than his eyes are little, Alan Alden. Um, his skills in dance also, like Muhammad Ali, uh, dance on the on the ring because the Aquarius has also skills in dance, skills in legs. Mm-hmm. Like John uh, Travolta or Justin Timberlake, this is typical influence of his abilities. So that's 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 also uh, open-minded. Uh, people. That's why he, when you look, his eyes is always uh, looks like he thinking. Aquarius always his eyes thinking every every second. <laughs> <laughs> and when they walk in the room, they skip in like a hovercraft, feet first. <laughs> yeah. Bounce. They don't touch the ground. I swear they don't. I was. And and the the chest falls back like wind is blowing and pushes the top half back like mm-hmm. a sail. The wind is pushing this back and the feet are carrying them forward. That's a little analogy of this wind resisting the winds um, is very Aquarius to resist all wind, <laughs> yeah. all, all ideas, all of it. So that you get the body language, but I just, it's the most obvious face for me. I look at uh, John Travolta, you know, Ellen DeGeneres, Gina Davis, and of course, uh, we mentioned him earlier. Mm-hmm. Justin. So, uh, and I don't know why I drew the nose like this. That's because there's a little lump on top, a, a bubble. There you can see it. There's a bubble on top of the bubble of the nostrils. You don't really, it's a, it's a double knob. I'm gonna, I don't have that right. Uh, I don't know why I ended up doing that, but there's something like that. It's, Sometimes they have a big, big noses, Aquarius. Not, yeah, not um, Jimmy Durante with his big nose. Yeah, remember him from the old days? He, he had a huge snout, of course, or a huge nose. 
Yeah, I got work on this drawing. Oh, yeah. Anyway, that's Aquarius. Again, we now we get a Senate, Russell Crowe. There's an Aries with Aquarius Ascendant. You can see the light. Mm -hmm. they, like Libra, they have the rather large lids, but they, they pull in on the side with Aquarius. Mm -hmm. Libra, they tend to run out. Remember when we talked about Libra, those lids? With Aquarius, they're all pulling in. Those eyelids are pulling in. And uh, the third is obvious, Leah Ryan. She had, oops, I just messed it up. I was supposed to do it. Uh, and again, the, there you can see where she has the fairly small facial features for a Virgo. It's the faces. Aquarius rising, she's rather square features, doesn't have the long Virgo chin. The face, the, it seems to be pulling inward. Even though she is a Virgo, they tend to go like this. Mm -hmm. Orlando blooms a Capricorn. I just love that look. I see that in a lot of Aquariuses. Hey, I got an idea. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Yeah. And Condi Rice. Them. And there's a very Aquarius face. Look how small the facial features for the big face. She's a Scorpio. Little obviously more intense, little larger, mm -hmm. rounder. And a Taurus Audrey Hepburn. Yeah. I wonder, I bet you she's the uh, Gemini decant of. Uh, Aquarius ascended. I'll have to check that. That's just a huh. guess. You start if you want it. You just nick pick this, and you go the Sabian symbols, and you can discuss all three hundred and sixty degrees and put six million angels on the head of a pin. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, okay. And okay, last and not least is Pisces, the, the, the completion of the cycle before we start again with Aries. Pisces is mutable water. They're, they're in a dream bubble. They're floating, paddling feet first, heel and toe, heel and toe. The changing of them, yeah, the changing of them. What's that? They, 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 they like to change something. If if they agree meetings, they changing this and changing mind often. Yeah. Like water. Water, yeah. They're um I I find them the most liquid of the water signs, even though cancers are more like the tides. They're moving like the tides. This this is the surface water sloshing onto the shore and breaking and receding. Santo, you have a moon in Pisces, yeah? Yep. Oh, that's where I got the Pisces, all right. Yeah. George Harris. Liza, Liza Minnelli, I think, typically represents a moon, sorry, not moon, water influence the Pisces as the ice is very roundy and, and, and it's too far, uh, far away from each other. So probably, do you have a will have uh, other signs? Eliza Minelli? I don't, I ran out of space on my little. No problem, I'll check. I, uh, I, I could get Liza Minelli. I got her in the chart, in the book. Uh, she has a. Uh, um, Moon in Cancer, Sun in Pisces, and Ascendant Taurus. Taurus, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. So like Earth and Water mixed. Yeah. And uh, Drew Barrymore, uh, Steve, St you're Australian again. We got another Australian here. 
He's yeah. a Pisces. Um, I can't remember. Is he a sad rising? So this is why Eliza Mindali has uh, the eyes so far away from each other because she has a um, sun in Pisces and which is double sign. Yeah. And moon, moon in Cancer, crap, which is also double double sign. Maybe that's why. And I find people that have, regardless of their sun sign, even a Sagittarius, which you would not, I see a lot of Sagittarius that look cancer and they fool you because they have cancer moons. And anybody with a cancer moon, it certainly shapes the quality of what you're seeing. And and you and it really throws you off on the longer faces like Aries and Sag. Um, yeah. I've noticed that is Cancer moons show up stronger than any moon physically. Yeah. The the Steve Irwin you 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 looking again? Yeah? I, I I'm excuse me I'm looking for. Uh, I can tell you now, Steve Irwin. Sun in Pisces, Moon in Virgo, Sagittarius Ascendant. Yeah. Yeah, that was an interesting. I did an article for Dell on um, the um, on the Australian Outback Boy, and it was really. Uh, an interesting article on on the day that he got stung by the manti ray and died mm -hmm. it was it was literally in the chart yeah he's got the two eight yeah. he's a virgo moon and an aquarius rising uh, steve Irwin is yeah aquarius he always had that Along with the Pisces sense of wonder, there was always that little sp spark of when he was uh, running his zoo and talking to the cameras, he had a very good gift to gab. Yeah, yeah. And the gap in the, in the middle. He had this gap. And Steve Jobs, he, he was Pisces. He, he had some Aries, I believe. I should have wrote these down. Steve Jobs is Aquarius. Steve Jobs is Aquarius. Yeah. And Bon Jovi and Drew Barrymore. Anyway. And uh, and then and then you start with Gwyneth again. We she was Pisces rising. She has that dreamy look. And remember how much Libra we saw with her. Mm -hmm. Selling her beauty products, but, yeah. but this is the look that that many of the characters she had in the movie, the Shakespeare in Love, that sort of one. Laura Dern looks more. She's a Gemini with a Pisces ascendant. She's in a, some other world. She's really rounded features. That's not a great example, but I like that look in the eyes. You don't see that look in the eyes with a Gemini. Virgo, mm -hmm. Pisces, Ascendant. There's Dr. Phil. That's the one I see all the time. He looks totally lost. And I love Ringo Starr. That is the best picture of any Pisces Ascendant. <laughs> he looks look like a fish. He looks like a fish. Yeah, doesn't he? And look at look at the look at the lines. It looks like a fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. The it looks like a fish. The bone is just like a zoom. Oh. The and eyes is typical on the side, like fish has. Yeah. Going down down. Yeah, and, and, and eyes on the side really strong over here with Liza Minnelli. Oh Liza Minnelli has also similar like a fish. And uh, there's that softness to George Clooney for Taurus. You just feel real comfortable with him around. You don't feel threatened with 
he's always had that look of comfort of uh, mm -hmm. Pisces ascendant. And uh, for the Mary Tyler Moore Capricorn, which, uh, but she has Pisces. She's that's not a great picture. Uh, there's somewhere eyes are just huge. Huge eyes, yes. I remember other yeah. pictures that uh, she. Okay. So. And at last I came up with is one of the favorite articles which I did for Dell Horoscope. It was a two first two pager I did. I know it was they were I got to do the two pager. And Obi Wan Kenobi, Alex Guinness in the first Star Wars was was Obi Wan Kenobi and Evan McGregor. Yeah, he's. Uh, they both have their moons in um, Gemini. They both are Aries. And uh, and uh, Evan has Libra rising, which you can see right here. Look at that smile. But uh, if you were, I don't know if I used to love the old Alex Guinness movies when I was in college because he was a uh, they were English and they were funny and but he has Sun and Moon conjoined Venus look at those sleepy eyes Nicholas Cage <laughs> also has that look Nicholas Cage his sleepy eyes mm -hmm. we could go back to him if you want to look at him but um uh, Let's see. Oh, I don't have Nicholas Cage. I thought I did. Never mind. Sorry about that. But uh, what's what's interesting is that their charts are so similar in energies. Now, did these movie producers, when they picked this young guy to play a young Obi-Wan, did they uh, do astrology charts or did they just look at him and say, hey, I like his mannerisms. They might match Alex Guinness's. See what I'm saying? Yes, definitely. Some of them, they can check the chart, but mostly most of the people subconsciously recognize similar energy. Yeah. Yeah, and they just recognize that. And, yes. Uh, For example, uh, like Stanley Kubrick has a, a Scorpio influence, so this is not accident that he produced this kind of film with that, with a lot of uh, secret uh, information in the film, darkness and, and all the secrets. So this is kind of energy of Scorpio. Yeah. Well, that's... Uh, I just wanted to throw this in to say there's... There's so much, you know, like uh, so many musicians have huge Neptune, Neptune yeah. aspects. This uh, Adele has a whole bunch of Taurus and Neptune, and this goes on and on and all of them, you know, this Neptune, Neptune. Uh, movie directors are all Neptune and their styles are changed with the transits of the movies have changed with the transit of Neptune. When it changes a sign, the movie trend changes. I got a little episode on that in the book. Uh, it's just the rhythms are there. We are part of those rhythms and we got to learn to live with them, you know, and be part of them. And, and, uh, I think it's pretty easy to do if you're getting stuck in a rut somewhere and you're feeling all tied up. Let's say you're feeling like a triple Taurus. Remember, the next sign is Gemini. Break it up. Move on. Yes. Get too scattered. Come back with cancer. The process is there. Every minute, every hour, every day, every month, every year. You know, it's pretty neat. And this is my plug for the books, mm -hmm. astrovisions.com 
Sing it's a very good it. book. Very yeah. good book. This dance on the Zodiac is you can find out many information. Yeah, and uh, let's see. I should be. Able I, to... I hear that CIA agent uh, they they buying this book to to find out uh, how to recognize the people by the look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All, I, mentalists, I, all the mentalists, famous magician, illusionist, mentalists, uh, CIA, NSA agents, uh, they they looking for this kind of information. Detectives, many different agencies, because this is this is very very useful for for them, for well, marketing, I'm, for relation, to find out the other half. So I recommend this kind of book because this kind of knowledge you you won't find at school. Now I I was I was amazed I was able to, to capture all this. Took a lot of time, but you know Capricorns one step at a time. Blood, blood, blood. So, so Santos, thank you for allowing this to happen. And Greg, thank you very much. It was a big pleasure, and I hope we can meet again. But uh, I want to ask also Santo Bonacci who. Uh, who introduced uh, you to, to, to our public and, and also for in general for everything. Well, thank you. It was, uh, I'm really uh, glad this happened. I have a tendency to, I did get wrapped up in this last book as I didn't do anything for three years other than work on it. And and once it was done, I wanted to redo it. But <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Because, uh, oh, I could have done something totally different. But anyway, well, um, Santos. I think so.